two games to one. Savard wasn't the only blue nemesis. So was a little five foot, five inch rookie goaltender by the name of Darren Pang. A save there on Brett Hull. Another save on Blues point man Brian Bennett. And then not only are goaltenders good, but sometimes lucky. Federko missing an open net. Meanwhile, Pang faced 42 shots on the evening, 24 in the first period, an all-time Stanley Cup record. Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Chicago Stadium, and welcome to game four of the series. The Blues still lead the series two games to one. With Ken Wilson, I'm Dan Kelly. Ken, I know you saw the action in St. Louis. I know you were busy with baseball last night, but it was a completely different game if you just looked at the score, but it really wasn't. The Blues played quite well. They just couldn't get it behind paint. If there's one thing the Blues could probably do a little bit better tonight, Dan, and I think they will, is check a little bit more. And of course, you've got the problem. How do you stop Denny Savard? Rick Mahar did a great job at home. Doug Gilmore last night, not as superior your job and of course the home ice advantage gives Chicago the last line change. It's tough to defend against the bar. The Blues will make one change. Jocelyn Lemieux, who hasn't played since January, will be in the lineup tonight replacing Breck Baslowski who injured a groin last night. How much Lemieux will play I don't know but I expect this to be a physical game and he's a physical player so he might be right at home. Yeah he should really help. The farther you go in these series, the more physical they become. And this game is really the swing game. If the Blues win it, they have a commanding lead, of course. If Chicago wins it, they're in better shape, but the Blues still have the edge with two out of the possible three at home. A very key hockey game coming up here at Chicago Stadium. Game four tonight, game five in St. Louis on Tuesday. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. The two teams are on the ice. It is game four of the Norris Division semifinals. The Red Wings and the Maple Leafs battling tonight in Toronto in the other Norris Division semifinal matchup. And of course, the Detroit Red Wings have a two to one lead in that best of seven series. Well, this crowd is always electric here in Chicago. Not as big last night as one would expect in the playoffs. And tonight's crowd might also be on the thin side. The Stanley Cup playoffs have not been that prosperous on the ice for the Blackhawks in the last few years. And, of course, last night changed the losing trend. Wearing number 15 tonight, Jocelyn Lemieux. He broke his ankle in a game on January 23rd. Had some ligament damage. Underwent surgery. He has come back rather hurriedly. He had some muscle, as Dan Kelly pointed out, in the lineup tonight. Now this crowd beginning to get fired up. One scratch tonight for Chicago that could make a difference. Steve Thomas is out with the flu. This crowd on its feet. Wayne Messmer ready at the mic. Nancy Faust at the organ with the national anthem.
season, a goals against average of 3-5-1. At the other end, Darren Pang. He carried a lot of the load in the regular season, and oh, did he carry the load last night for Bob Murdoch, Chicago Blackhawks. Another scratch for the Blues. Barry Turnbull played last night. He's not dressed tonight, and Doug Evans is suited up for St. Louis. We're ready to go, and here's Dan Kelly. Okay, Ken Wilson, Rick Mahar against Savard. Mahar wins the draw, and Paul Cavallini feeds it into center ice and down into the hot zone. Gary Nyland, number 22, back to get it to Steve Larmer. Larmer, normally a right winger, but lately has been on the left side. Broken up by Gino Cavallini. Now into center ice, Rick Mahar flips it into the hot zone. Hangs the goaltender out of the net to flip it out on left wing. And Chicago's Nyland cleared to center. Mahar broke that up. Here's Gaston Gingra clearing it to the hawk line. Nyland for Savard. Savard is checked and Gino Cavallini and Rick Five to ride. Five wins the puck and flipped it into the blue zone. Gaston Gingra knocked down. Penalty coming up to Savard. He turns and got away a shot anyway, but Savard will get an early hooking penalty and the Blues will be on the power play. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. 47 seconds in, Dennis Savard picks up a hooking penalty, a bad penalty in the offensive zone, hooking Shingra. Blues power play last night. They didn't score early on the power play, and that hurt their chances. Overall, the Blues had five goals, a 22.7 percentage in these playoffs. Chicago clear it down the ice. Benning and Shingra are the point men with up front Gilmore, Federko, and Brett Hull. Now here's Benning just handing the puck to Troy Murray. He drops it back to Trentiani, and the young rookie defenseman who's played like a poised veteran, Yanni, shoots it down the ice. Jingra back to get it for the Blues, giving it to Federko. Number 24, Bernie Federko into Bennett. Into the hot zone on right wing for Bennett. Into the corner for Bennett. Squeezed out of the play by Chicago's McGill. Jingra held it in. Shoots, that's high and wide. Dirk Graham, number 33, then cleared at the center. And Gilmore feeds it across to Brett Hull. Hull, three goals in three games in this series. Into Gilmore, back to Hull. Cuts in. Shoots blocked by McGill. The Dirk will back of the net to Hull. Gets it in front. Comes out near the blue line where Benning takes it. His centering pass to Hull. Backhander. And a stick save by Payne. Yanni checked by Gilmore. Gilmore stealing the puck. Gives it to Gingra. Now to Benning. He missed it, and 45 seconds remain in the penalty as Benning has to chase back. Number two, Brian Benning out on the wing for Gilmore. Gilmore now in his own zone to Gaston Gingra. He moves up into center ice on left wing to Gino Cantalini, but that's offside at the Chicago blue line. 29 seconds remain in the Hawk penalty. The best chance the Blues have had on this power play was a little backhand shot by Brett Hall in the slot. He wasn't able to get much on it. He was checked very tightly. Gino Cavallini had an outstanding game last night. He has played very physical hockey for the St. Louis Blues. Gary Nyland, of course, for Chicago, a key on defense, along with Trent Yawney. They're probably the two best Chicago defensemen. Nyland with career highs in goals, assists, and points. Last season, he's the former Toronto Maple Leaf. Face off, won by Paul Cavallini, who cleared it in. Out of the goal is Payne to set it up back of the net. And it's Keith Brown trying to clear it. Good play by Paul Cavallini, shooting. Right on, Payne a save. And with Gino Cavallini on the doorstep, Darren Payne made sure there was no rebound. Goaltending is so important. That and your special teams. And the Blues power play getting shut down by Pang right here. Able to get his trapper out along with those white pads. Got the white pads, the white blocker, the white trapper. Whatever happened to the days when everything was just plain old leather color? Now you have color television nowadays, you know. <laughs> it's all entertainment. Showbiz. Here's Paul Cavallini at the right point. Into McKegney. Into the side of the net to Herkus. Back to McKegney. Shoots. That's blocked at the defense. Good block made by Brown. Into the corner. Herkus. Back on the point. Drive. Roberts. That's good. Oh, Herkus on the rebound. Tony Herkus on the power play for the Blues. And the Blues score to take a 1-0 lead. Just as the power play was ending. Savard just coming on the ice. At it, two minutes of the power play, 
Roberts from the point. And here's the importance of getting position in front. You see three blues. And Tony Herc is at the side of the net, left unattended. Three blues there. And Troy Murray trying to come back and catch Tony McKegney. But the Chicago defense did not do a very good job with the Blues forwards, and the Blues with three forwards there, really having the extra man in front of Pang. And the Blues get that early goal tonight, and Bob Murdoch makes a quick note right there for something to point out to his team during the intermission. Probably cover that man in front of the net, which the Hawks didn't do, and Herka scored to make it one nothing. Now it is Lutzik for Chicago getting it into the corner, but the Blues Penning breaks out. To Rick Mahar into center ice. Here's Mahar, long shot. Bang handles that, and the veteran Bob Murray, number six, starts back for Chicago to Vince Select. Vince Select firing it in. Big collision down ice between Langley and Bob Murray. Now here's Dwayne Sutter for Chicago. Cleared it into the corner, but Benning gets it to Bothwell. Now to Pedrisco. Into the hawk zone to Rag. Back in front. Pedrisco a chance, shoots, and he shot it wide as he was knocked down by Manson. Raglan, Flatten, Manson, and he'll get a penalty. Back comes Chicago on the delay penalty call. Lane Sutter moving in, and now the penalty call. Raglan really flattened Manson. Manson would like to retaliate. Raglan is getting a penalty on the play. And Manson would be wise to stay away. He doesn't want to go in there with Raglan as well. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. The play with Federko in front, drilled by Manson, set up the penalty, really. Raglan comes in after that and really drills Manson. And Gregson, the referee, was right there on the spot. Again, the Blues taking a penalty in the offensive zone. And most all the time, that's a very, very bad play. Now the Hawks trailing 1-0. Here's Weimer, rounding the boards to Denny Savard. Back to Trent Yanni at the point. Yanni to the other point to Murray. Back to Trent Yanni. Beats Dennis Savard. Shoots blocked by Bothwell. Back to Yanni at the point. Now to Bob Murray. Murray firing it around. Blocked by Mahar. Comes back to Yanni to Murray. In on the board. Shot. Save made by Millen on the shot by Larmer and Mahar. Then cleared it off the boards and down the ice. 125 left in Herb Raglan's penalty. Blue scored when they had a power play. Chicago now on their power play. They're at the center. Gilmore knocks it down. Gilmore shot. Now breaking that up. Gilmore trying to clear it up. by Savard intercepting into Rick Bob. Five cutting in. The veteran winger. Back to Yanni at the point. Other point to Keith Brown. Flat shot and Millen up. Stick save and now five injured on the play. Limps around in front of the Blues goal. I don't know what happened to him. Here is five. Dropping it to Savard. Savard into the corner. Savard center. And score! Steve Larmer! Each team takes an offensive penalty, and it costs them. Out in front. He had been injured, I believe, slashed earlier by Bothwell, either on the forearm or in the ribs. And a nice job setting up Larmer. Larmer usually on the power plays on the other side, on his off wing. But now on the left wing, gets the goal. Larmer, a prolific scorer, gets his first goal of the playoffs. And it's now 1-1, one to one, still shy of the five-minute mark. And Jacques Martin looking like Bob Johnson or Bob Murdoch makes a note himself and says something immediately to Doug Gilmore. 1-1, each team has scored in the power play. Chicago cleared in, Gaston Gingra back to get it. Gingra shot at the center, that's knocked down by Everett Sanipas who cleared it in. Sanipas who had a broken hand problem in the lineup tonight for Chicago though. Here's Gingra firing it in. Out of the goal is Payne to play the puck. Flips it, flipped it over the glass. Did it hit somebody first? Jingra flat on the ice, and he's injured. Jingra took that shot. Troy Murray checked him. Troy Murray's stick went by, and Jingra an immediate pain. He was hit when he.
he was off balance on the follow through of the shot by Troy Murray, one of the finest defensive forwards in the league. I'm not sure if it's the shoulder, the ribs, but he was really off balance and just got caught in a very, very bad spot. That first Chicago, the first goal of the game here in Chicago, the Blues goal at 2.37, a power play goal, Herkus from Roberts and McKegney. Then the Blackhawks tie it with a power play goal at 4.51, Larmer from Savard and Vive. Now Gingra getting helped up. The Blues trainer Norm Mackey out, and at least Gingra able to skate off. Looks like his shoulder or his left arm, Dan. In the first period last night, Jingra was hit on the back of the neck and was woozy on the bench and had to go to the Blues locker room. He did come out and play the second and third period. But he was knocked woozy last night, and now Norm Mackey is going to send Jingra right to the Blues locker room. Well, that is not good news. Of course, Mark Hunter is already on the shelf. Jingra obviously in pain as he goes down the stairs to the basement visiting dressing room here. And, of course, Jock Martin, at least for the moment, plays it short of defenseman. Blues shoot it into the Hawk zone. Lemieux is out there on the line with Paderko and McKegney. McKegney on right wing with Jocelyn Lemieux on the left side. Hawks try and move it out of there and do to Troy Murray. Only one man back. Murray shot. Big save by Millen. Murray after the rebound. Cleared it into the corner, and here's Lemieux. Clears it out into center ice, and then took a hit from Dirk Graham on the play. Lemieux skates up ice and gives the Chicago player a little nudge. Play is stopped because a piece of glass had been knocked out on that hit in the corner involving Lemieux and Dirk Graham. Well, Dirk Graham, the former North Star, very tough. And though we haven't seen Jocelyn Lemieux in quite a while, we all know how he plays. He really bangs and rocks. And he and Graham came together and knocked one of the plates of glass right out and that will bring us a delay as the Chicago Stadium attendants come out. 14-17 left in the opening period. 1-1. Moments ago Troy Murray coming in the left wing lets the shot go. Routine play for Millen. The key is the rebound and Paul Cavallini right there played it very nicely on a two-on-one and able to poke the rebound into the corner. Millen gets a break. Goes over to the bench as the glass will be repaired with a score 1-1 here at Chicago Stadium. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. With Dan Kelly, Ken Wilson, both teams have scored early power play goals here in game four of this best of seven Norris Division semifinal series. The Blues have outshot the Blackhawks here in the early going 5-4. The delay is because the glass fell on a lady in the first row. She apparently now is all right and will be moved away, and they'll get to work on replacing that glass. Well, the physical aspects of Stanley Cup playoff hockey are well chronicled, and when teams get familiar with each other as the Blues and the Blackhawks are getting, well, you can expect tempers to flare frequently. Jacques Martin, his second year coaching the Blues, Last season, injury riddled and finished first on the last night of the season ahead of Detroit in the Norris Division regular season. And this year did not match the numbers of a year ago. Bob Burdock, this season with Chicago in the spot that Martin was in a year ago, a rookie coach. He has improved the special teams of the Chicago Blackhawks greatly. That's right, everywhere. And this Dan Kelly is going to take a while to replace that segment of glass. The other assistant coach, Joe Micheletti, in behind the bench, of course, a former Blues defenseman as well as a former broadcaster. Just thinking as I watch this game unfold in the early minutes, if the message hasn't gotten across to either team, they might be reminded of it now by their respective coaches. Stay out of the penalty box. Hawks got a penalty, Blues scored. Blues got a penalty, Hawks tied it. Going to have to turn the cheek a few times tonight and worry about getting your evens later. Let the other guy take the penalty and you go on the power play. It's sometimes easier to say up here than it is to do down on the ice, but I'm sure that's something that both coaches will be telling their players with the way this game has started. Well, we're talking disciplined hockey, and disciplined hockey is more important than ever when you
when you get to the Stanley Cup playoffs. Savard took really a poor penalty because of aggressiveness in the offensive zone early. That led to the Herkus goal. And Raglan really did uh, damage with a retaliatory penalty in the offensive zone that set up the Larmer power play goal for the Chicago Blackhawks. And it is 1-1 with 14-17 left in the first period. In defense of Raglan, by the way, one of the banners hanging here at Chicago Stadium, one of the headiest hockey players that's ever played, Stan Mikita. He's sitting with Cliff Coral, a former line mate who's still employed by the Blackhawks. What a playmaker and what a hockey player Mr. Makita was. As smart a player, Ken, as I think I've ever seen. Boy, he was terrific on face-offs, put some great numbers on the board. Wasn't very big, but was very tough and very, very physical. The uncheckable check, as he was called. He was born in Czechoslovakia. I was going to say about the Raglan penalty, not that he mightn't have had a penalty, but I know this, he didn't cross-check Manson to the ice on that check. It was a good shoulder check. The referee, Gregson, called it cross-checking. I would think that Raglan would have an argument. Well, the Blues ready to go now. Neither team really with a lot of momentum at the time of the incident, and everybody gets a breath now and ready to crank it up and get her going here. Face off is going to be just on the Hawks side of center ice. A 1-1 game. 14-17 left in the first period. Gilmore wins the face off, gets it to Paul Cavallini, who shoots it in. In comes Gino Cavallini. Couldn't hold it on the boards, and Graham works it out on right wing, and here's Troy Murray. Murray moving in, center. Santa Pass was there, but couldn't get a stick on it. Blues Doug Gilmore trying to get it out. Gets help from Paul Cavallini. Gilmore then flips it into the hawk zone. And back there is McGill to Trentiani. Back to Bob McGill. McGill into center ice to Graham. Graham's high backhander. Wide of the Blues goal. Here's Troy Murray looking like Dennis Savard as he spun around. But as he centered, Paul Cavallini broke it up. Back comes Raglan. Long shot. Hang steered it into the corner. Gino Cavallini. Took a hit from McGill on the play. Blues Bockwell holding it in. Bockwell shot blocked. Breakaway drive for Santa Pass. Santa Pass scores! Everett Santa Pass to get Chicago the lead. Santa Pass did not have much to shoot at coming in on the left wing a very bad angle right over the dot and he goes under the body of Millen Millen coming out sliding down but didn't get down quickly enough Bothwell trying to come back at a decent angle to slow up Santa pass and he just slides the puck under Millen before he could get completely prone on the surface and it's 2-1 Chicago Millen gambled on the play and lost he made the first move and Santa Pass beat him. And that's Millen's style. He uses that all the time. 2-1 Chicago. Here's Rick Mahar. Now firing it into the Hawk zone. Racing in after this Brian Sutter. Sutter trying to center. Broken up and here's Hanson for the Hawks. Clearing to center. Bothwell knocks it down. Now Tony Herkus into Brian Sutter. Tipped into the Hawk zone. Pang sets it up for Manson. Back of the goal. David Manson for Chicago. Shooting it off the boards into the blue zone and Bothwell. Back after it to Herkus. Now to Evans. Into Brian Sutter. Shoots Pang. Comes out. Makes a pad save. And Black then scores it. His first in the playoffs. Scored by number seven, Everett Sanapan. And Pang again. Coming up big. Pang making the save on Sutter. Sutter letting her go from a good 35 feet out. And we made the point earlier, goaltending, especially when you get in a playoff series, can really get a job done for you. If you get a goalie who just plays over his head, over his normal level, he can carry you a lot further than you would expect to go. Rick Mahar now on the ice against Savard. Mahar, a big defensive story for the Blues. Here's Roberts on the left point, moving in. Now to Paul Cavallini, shot deflected. Hang, crawled across. smothered in that goal, Chris. Pang didn't know where it was, but it didn't go in. Now, Paul Cavallini fans a little bit 
kind of like a knuckleballer, a changeup. It doesn't get there as quickly as Pang expects, and he's really lucky here. He's flat in his back, doesn't know where the puck is. Fortunately for Pang and the Blackhawks, the puck in the crease under his leg. It was deflected right in front by Federko, and I'm telling you, he really had to battle, and his change of direction on the initial shot almost beat Darren Pang. Here's Mahar out against Murray on this faceoff, deep in the hot zone. Blues win it. Ragland's shot is blocked. And it winds up underneath Gino Cavallini, who had been knocked to the ice. So we'll get another faceoff in the Chicago zone. That last Blackhawk goal was unassisted, scored by Santa Pass. 6.39 the time. Santa Pass, by the way, as we mentioned, seeing his first action, he's playing with a broken hand. Still 12.26 left, first period. Herkus scoring first for the Blues, a power play goal. Larmer tying it on the power play. And now the Santa Pass goal to make it 2-1 Chicago. And the faceoff almost directly in front of Darren Pang. Remember, game five of the series will be in St. Louis Tuesday. Here's Paul Cavallini, a high shot off the glass. Dino Cavallini on the boards gets checked. Hawks shoot at the center, and then Paul Cavallini fires it back in. Blackhawks, Frank Yanni back to pick it up. To Bob McGill, who cleared it to center. Gordy Roberts knocks it down. Roberts back into his own zone to Paul Cavallini. Now to Doug Gilmore. Gilmore checked by Graham on the play. And Gordy Roberts has to go back. Roberts for St. Louis. Picking his way out of the St. Louis end of the rink. Comes to center and shoots it into the Hawks zone. Bang leaves it for McGill. Bob McGill for Chicago. Into center ice to Graham. He's checked by Gino Cavallini. And Gino Cavallini, who's had an outstanding series, feeds it up to Raglan on right wing. Raglan is checked. Blackhawks back of their own blue line with Steve Larmer. To Dennis Savard. Into the blue zone. Shoots! And Miller just got a piece of that with his goal stick. And I mean just a piece of it. Raglan back for Chicago. Out to Sutter, who tipped it into center ice. And Rick Five, who was shaken up earlier, gets it for the Hawks to Nyland. He and Paul Cavallini have a head-on collision. And that shook them both up. That is Doug Evans for the Blues. Stick handling in his own zone. Cleared it across to Brian Sutter. Now shot into center ice, and Keith Brown has it there. Brown firing it back in. Doug Evans on the boards. Trying to flip it into center ice. Warmer knocking that down. And now Robert Dirk, the big rookie defenseman, flips it high into the hot zone. Back after it, Keith Brown, and that's going to be an icing call against St. Louis. The Hawks are leading 2-1. to one. We'll pause 15 seconds here for station identification. This is St. Louis Blues Hawk. KPLR-TV St. Louis, Channel 11, the ones to watch. and the Blackhawks, but give Millen a lot of credit there. Some carelessness on the part of Bothwell and Benning, really the fact that Bothwell lost his footing and fell down. The Blues, of course, 
Stars playing without Jingra now after the early injury. Also, Todd Ewan on the ice here, which is a reflection, I'm sure, of the physical aspects of this first period. His first shift of the game. Savard wins the faceoff. Ox Larmer shoots. Doing the save on that. And he juggled it a little bit, but then was able to cover up. This is Chicago's big line on the ice. Savard, Larmer, and Vibe. Larmer lets it go from a good distance. It seemed to fool Millen, and he wanted no part of a rebound and just goes down to smother it. The Blackhawks really not forechecking exceptionally well, but again, to make the point, the Blues not coming out of their own end real well, not crisp with the play in their own end, and until they begin to establish that on a couple of shifts, it gives the Blackhawks a real big, big advantage. Blues now make a change to get Mahar in against Savard, but the Hawks make a change and get out Troy Murray to get Savard away from Mahar. That's Murray back of the net against Paul Cavallini. Now Herbie Ragland trying to work it free on the board. Comes back into the corner for Paul Cavallini to Roberts. Back to Paul Cavallini. Into center ice to Gino Cavallini. He shoots it in. Went back to get it to Stanson. He fell down. Now Murray there to clear it. Gets it to Santa Pass who scored that go-ahead goal on a breakaway. Now it's Troy Murray shooting it in. Gino Cavallini back for the blue. Battling on the board with Santa Pass. Hawks center it out. Paul Cavallini cleared it away. Now the Blues. Raglan breaks out on right wing to center. Into the hot zone. He's upended and Troy Murray will get a penalty for Chicago. And the Blues will have a power play coming up. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. 10.53, the time of the hooking penalty to Troy Murray. Raglan really wasn't going anywhere. Murray just a, a hook that he regrets now. Don't forget now, game five, Tuesday night at the arena at 7.35. Good seats available. We hope you'll be with us. You'll also see it on Channel 11, KPLR-TV, and on WIBV Radio, 12.60 a.m. Here are the Hawks, shorthanded, clearing it down the ice. Blues on a power play and trailing 2-1. to one. Brian Benning for the Blues in his own zone. The Dougie Gilmore who breaks to center. Into Brett Hall who's into the hot zone. Giving it to Federko. Bernie Federko trying to center to Gilmore. Back to Federko again. On the point to Paul Cavalier. Now into Brett Hall. Hall moves in. Shoots. Hang the save. And the rebound cleared away by the Hawks. Now on the point. Benning shoots it back of the net to Federko. Off his skate. And then Savard gets it for the Hawks and cleared it out of there. And Benning has to go back. Here's where Gingra is missed badly. He's a point man normally on the power play. He's in the locker room with an injured elbow. There's Federko into Benning on right wing. Shot it back of the net. McGill for the Hawks there to clear it right back up. And Chicago has to retreat. One minute left in the penalty. Or the Blues have to retreat. Paul Cavallini losing it to Lutzik. Knocked it in behind the net, and Tony Herkus, who's had the Blues' only goal, starts out of his own zone. Herkus through center ice into Federko. Trying to break through in the clear. And pulled down, and the Hawks will get another penalty here. And the Blues will have a two-man advantage. Troy Murray already in there, has 39 seconds left, and now another Hawk, Trent Yanni, to the penalty box. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. 14, the time of the tripping penalty to Trent Yawney. Herkus, a nice little pass to Federko. He was about ready to shoot, and he gets tripped by Yawney, who played on that 88 Canadian Olympic team. And as Dan pointed out, Yawney has moved right in and played very well for the Blackhawks in the playoffs. Two-man advantage now. They brought Brent Hull back on a point with Gordy Roberts, Gilmore, McKechnie, and Herkus up front. Blues had a two-man advantage in the first period last night, and Darren Pang stoned him, and the Blues were shut out in that period. Big chance here for the Blues, who trail 2-1. Puck dropped, and Pang, the goaltender, cleared it out into center ice. Back is Roberts for the Blues into the hot zone. Roberts moving it into the corner on left wing, back to Brett Hull. Hull shoots off the glove of Pang. Now Gilmore back to the net. In front to McKechnie, cleared away. Now McKechnie up for the left point man, who is Roberts. Now to Brett Hull, moving in. Takes the shot, feeds Gilmore. Put it through the crease, McKechnie missed it. Now Herkus for the Blues. Tony Herkus, back to Brett Hull. Hull, fakes, feeds Gilmore. Pang! Robs, got Gilmore. And then held on to it. Darren Pang, a good job. 
Boy, Brett Hall really adds a dimension on that point. You just know that he's going to do a job. Earlier, a big save off the glove. Brett Hall had the upper corner picked out. Now, in the second effort, he'll pass to Gilmore. I thought it might have hit the post behind Pang and then flip-flop up in front of him. It was a very poor angle. Darren Pang, in an era where the masks are not very colorful, has a most colorful mask that he wears. And I'll tell you something, he's a good little goalie. He's really been a big difference for the Blackhawks in this 87-88 season. Cruz with a two-man advantage, and now Fox clear it down the ice, and Troy Murray, one of the penalized players, backed on, so they're just one man short. 113 left here in the penalty as Herkus breaks out of his own zone to Gilmore. Gilmore into the Chicago zone. Manson back to get it for the Blackhawks. Manson trying to clear it out of there. He does. And the Blues with 57 seconds left in. The Hawk penalty have to go back. Roberts behind the net to McKechnie. Tony McKechnie moving it to Gordy Roberts. Roberts for St. Louis out of his own end of the rink. Coming to center ice. Into the hot zone. Roberts taken out on the play. Manson finds an opening and shoots it away. And the Blues have to retreat again. 35 seconds left in the hot penalty. Here's Brent Hull feeding one to Doug Gilmore. Now to Federico, broken up at center ice. And here comes Weimer breaking away for the Hawks. Weimer's weak shot turned aside by Millen. Gilmore wraps it around on the boards to Brent Hull. Hull, a point man on the power play here, giving it to Gilmore. Gilmore across center into the hot zone for Federico. He centered it, knocked away by Lutzik for Chicago. And Paul Cavallini has to go back. Yanni getting ready to come back on. He is back on. Here comes Paderka. Shooting off Payne's shoulder. And then over top of the net. Nyland trying to clear it. Now center to Mahar. Buck comes to Benning. Benning at the point. Benning shooting. Wide to the target with that drive. Now Mahar. Third it in behind the goal. Nyland gets it to Yanni. Yanni taken out on the play. Here's Mahar. Gino Cavallini forcing a face-off in the hot zone. But a big morale booster there for Chicago. They kill off a two-man short situation. No question, Dan. That's very, very important for Chicago. This is a point now where the next two or three minutes you watch have the Blackhawks gotten the lift you would expect. A fellow like Herb Ragland can change things right back to the Blues' favor. He's the kind of guy who goes out and hammers away 73 games this season, had 25 points. He's on a line with Mahar and the Blues captain, Brian Sutter. And isn't it unusual to be at Chicago Stadium with the Blues here and see empty seats, especially in the playoffs? Well, the Blackhawks had had a tough end of the season and have lost 11 straight playoff games going back to 1985 before they won last night. Here's Ranglin on the board, trying to shoot it. Held in by Manson. This shot blocked by Ragland. Manson again a drive. And it wants it in deflected wide. Now Mahar into center ice. Shoots it into the hot zone. Going back is Bob Murray for Chicago. Murray winding it around to Dan Vincelet. Vincelet number 11 for the Blackhawks. Shoots it in. Robert Dirk back together. Here's Dirk trying to clear to Sutter. Missed him and McGill at center ice has it to Dwayne Sutter. Into Vincelet, but Dirk is there to clear it back into center ice. Brent Yanni for Chicago. Firing it into the blue zone. Now Jocelyn Lemieux knocked down on the boards. Fell on top of the puck. And we'll get a stoppage. And a faceoff in the St. Louis zone with 4.25. Left in the opening period, 2-1 Chicago. Well, the Blues hoping they can come from behind and take a 3-1 lead in this best-of-seven series. If they're able to do that tonight, they'll have a chance to wrap it up and move to the Norris Division Finals on Tuesday night at home as they mix it up along the boards on the far side. In the middle of it, who else? Jocelyn Lemieux and Kirby Ragland. By the way, again, a 7.35 game, Tuesday night at the arena, game five of this series. And tickets available first thing tomorrow morning and all day Tuesday at the arena box office. All famous bar tickets now outlets are by calling dial ticks at 434-6600. This is St. Louis Blues Hockey.
with Ken Wilson, Dan Kelly at Chicago Stadium. Quick shot from the faceoff by the Hawks. Now Mahar trying to get it to Gino Cavallini, and he shoots at the center ice. Going back is Trent Yanni for Chicago. Yanni fires it back to center. Bothwell knocks it down. Bothwell to Benning. Benning for the Blues. Through center ice and into the hot zone. Benning puts on the brakes. Centers to Gino Cavallini. Backhander. Saved by Tang on the short side. Now Mahar shoots Tang to his knees to stop that. And Chicago starts back. Into center ice. Larmer in Dubai with a quick shot. And coming to save on that. And then everybody gets their sticks up off to either side of the net. In this first period, which is now down to 3.46 to go, the Blues have outshot the Hawks 13-9. Moments ago, Darren Pang had to come up with a big save. Gino Cavallini, a good job centering the puck, bouncing. It'll come to Mahar, and he lets a quick shot go, and it's really right in the midsection of Pang. That was the result of some carelessness on the part of the Blackhawks defense, and that certainly has not been their strong suit. In this period, I can think of only three good chances the Hawks have had. The power play goal by Larmer, the breakaway goal by Santa Pass, and the breakaway that Steve Ludzik had. Other than that, the Hawks really have not had good scoring opportunities. The Blues have the advantage in shots, seemingly have had the better scoring opportunities, and I think Chicago has played well. Here's a drive by Brown from the point. Millen a pad save on that, and McKegney, 40 goal man in the regular season, but hell scoreless so far in the playoffs. Clears it into Federico, and Nyland took him out. Now Graham for the Hawks. Lost it to Lemieux. Rossum and Lemieux unable to center. Hawks shoot it around. There's Paul Cavallini dropping one. Now he gets tied up, and the Hawks, Nyland, gets it to Santa Pass, who shoots it down the ice. And Roberts goes hustling back after it. Gordy Roberts for the Blues. Turning in his own zone. Back of the net for Robert Dirk. Up the middle to Federko. Federko into the hot zone. Trying to move through the defense guys. And pull down by Nyland. And no penalty call. Here's McKegney to Roberts. Shooting. Paying the save. Rebound with you. Into Federko, he gets checked. And then Santa Pass cleared it up. Now Brian Sutter trying to clear it in, but play is called. Some kind of an altercation over between the benches as the teams were in the act of changing on the fly. Troy Murray there for Chicago, and I believe he's yelling at Todd Ewan standing by the sticks behind the bench. It's an interesting situation here. The benches are very tight. It's like a fire drill, just changing lines when both teams are changing at the same time. It's away from the play. You don't typically watch it or see it, but there's a lot of bumping and colliding when lines are changed at Chicago Stadium. Certainly, Darren Pang, again, has been a key factor. Now there'll be a penalty to Jocelyn Lemieux. Moments ago, Gordy Roberts, a low shot. Pang down, makes the save. Lemieux can't get the rebound. He's drilled, and I mean whacked by Nyland. The puck loose. Santa Pass able to clear it away, but Pang has had a very good first period for the Hawks. The most dangerous shot was the rebound Seen to was in the Robert Dirk. I don't know if it hit Lemieux or hit Pang, but I know this. Pang never saw it, and I also know it never went in. 2.39 to go in this opening period. And penalties being handed out to Troy Murray and to Jocelyn Lemieux. So it was Troy Murray and Lemieux and then Todd Ewan. The coincidental roughing penalties coming here at 17.21 of the opening period. And, you know, when I look back at this period, Dan, I would say that the outstanding work again, like last night of Darren Pang, has been a very big factor. I think the Blackhawks are playing a, a good first period, making it that much tougher on the Blues, who I think generally have been very steady in this opening period. 15 to 10, the shots on goal favor the Blues, but the Hawks leading it 2 to 1. Now Gilmore, Hull, and Sutter for the Blues, with Dirk and Bothwell on defense. And the Blues make an immediate change. Benning replaces Dirk. Now Mahar replaces Gilmore. Here's Savard into the St. Louis zone. Tied up by Bothwell and Mahar. Now uh, Savard getting loose. Couldn't feed it in front. Timmy Bothwell cleared it out to Brian Sutter. Sutter into the hot zone to Mahar, but that's offside. Mahar was into the zone ahead of the puck. I'll never forget a few years ago, Dan Kelly, when Orville Tessier coached here.
year. The Blues got in the Campbell Con or the uh, Blackhawks got in the Campbell Conference Finals against Edmonton. Orville Tessier spent so much time keeping Dennis Savard away from the Oilers' checker on him that he hardly ever played. Here you've got a case tonight where Jacques Martin wants Mahar on against Savard. It forces a lot of maneuvering, a lot of quick line changes, and it probably hurts Doug Gilmore's ice time. And, of course, Gilmore, if the Blues are going to score goals, enough goals to win usually has to be a big factor. So stopping Savard with Mahar probably in most instances is going to hurt the Blues' offense a little bit. From the faceoff, it is Timmy Bothwell. Trying to move across center into Brian Sutter. Sutter then checked and Lutzik breaks it up to Dwayne Sutter for the Blackhawks. He cleared it in. Millen pokes it away. Ben Select knocked it behind the net. Now Benning tried to clear it. Murray at the point held it in. Brian Sutter blocked it. Bob Murray again. And cut to Larmer who deflected it wide. Now into the corner. Dwayne Sutter taken up. And Benning starts back for the Blues. Benning into the hot zone. Tied up. Hawks clear it out and Bothwell to feed it to Gilmore, who shoots it back in. Manson back for the Blackhawks. Dave Manson in his own zone. Out to Vincelet. Now Gilmore back in for St. Louis. Trying to feed McKechnie. Bob Murray had taken him up. And Wayne Sutter lines it around to Vincelet. Held in by Paul Cantalini. Now Vincelet cleared it. Gilmore held it in to McKechnie. Back over on the other side. Shot by Hall right now. Dang stopped that. And then Hull couldn't get to the rebound. Comes Brian Noonan for Chicago. He flips it in. Paul Cantalini back to get it. 105 left in the period. Hawks intercept. Graham a drive and on the shoulder of Miller. Graham again after a loose puck, but Gilmore breaks it out and feeds Hull, but the puck hopped over Hull's step. Less than a minute to play here in the first period. Chicago leading it two to one. Bob McGill back of his own goal to Santa Pass. Now off to Noonan, number 10. Ahead to Graham. Into the blue zone. Paul Cantalini breaks it up. To brother Gino. Gino Cantalini cutting in. And a goal. Chase Payne. Sprawled. Puck was in behind him. But he was able to find it and hold on. Oh, Gino Cantalini with a glorious chance. When you are red hot and Pang is, you stop everything, or almost everything. What a move around Yawning. Now the puck will end up near the shaft of the goal stick behind Pang. It's right under him, hits the shaft of the goal stick. Otherwise, it would have trickled over the goal line about three or four inches away. Pang had no idea where it was. It could have been out in the street in front of the building. Gino Cavallini just undresses Trent Yawning. Cuts in on his forehand, hits the goal post, and then it could well have trickled in, but Pang working with a four-leaf clover down to 30 seconds to go in this period. And the Blues, Dan Kelly, have really come on here in the last five or six minutes of period one. Face off with 30 seconds left deep in the hawk zone. Federco, Cavallini, and Evans, the Blues forward line. Savard and Pedrico on a faceoff, and Savard wins it, and Brown has it back of the net. Nyland now trying to clear it out to Larmer. He's trapped, but Savard puts it. Bothwell held it in. The Gino Cavallini shoots, and he put it high over the glass. The puck went up on in just as Gino went to unleash the slap shot, and that's why it took off on him. Gino Cavallini, former Calgary Flame, a product of the hockey program at Bowling Green State University. He is tough. Dan Kelly, I went to the hotel gym to work out this afternoon. I just happened to glance at the signees on the check-in list ahead of me. A fellow named Gino Cavallini spent the afternoon working out and lifting weights on a game day. He is as strong as they come. I wouldn't think they'd do that on the day of the game, huh? I tell you, you look at the body of Gino Cavallini, and I tell you, he must lift some weights every day. There's a long shot by Brown, firing it in. Gilmore back to get it. Gilmore behind his own goal to Benning. Benning trying to feed it out to Gilmore. Into the hot zone with two seconds left. Center to Evans, but there's the buzzer to end the first period. And the Blackhawks, despite being outshot, 16 to 10, skate to the locker room, leading 2 to 1.
Chicago getting goals to take a 2-0 lead before or to take a 1-0 lead. Blues came back to tie it and then they will break away goal by Santa Pass. The difference and that's where we stand after one period. Chicago leading the Blues 2-1. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. Now stay tuned for News Watch update coming up after these messages. Mr. Ramsey, you were here last night, and Mr. Wilson, we've seen an exhibition by Mr. Darren Pang again that's been the difference in this game. He's been exceptional, 16 blue shots. He only had one get by him, and again, goaltending can make a huge difference. This game started off a lot differently than did last night's when the Blues came out trailing 3-0 after the first period. Tonight, the Blues scored first as they took advantage of a Dennis Savard penalty. And Roberts and McKegney will get the assist. Roberts lets the shot go from the point. Bang makes the save, but Herc is right there. Right side goes upstairs, and the Blackhawks just let the extra man get away at 2.47, the Blues' power play goal. Then the Blues drew a penalty. And what do you know? The Hawks scored on the power play. Steve Larmer, always a very dangerous player, had been held scoreless in this series so far. Rick Five shielding in front of the net. The puck comes back into the slot. And Steve Larmer knows what to do when he gets the puck in the slot, and he tied it 1-1. Less than two minutes later, the tie broken. Blues defense gets caught. Santa Pass cut it in. Not the greatest angle. He's got Benning chasing him and Bothwell. Millen comes out and commits, and boy, Santa Pass sees that Millen's going to commit. Let's go a shot, and I really don't think he had intended to shoot at that point, but he was just able to slide the puck under Millen. And, of course, a very big play there. Santa Pass scoring a goal, playing in his first game. He's bothered by a broken hand, but he wasn't bothered too much there, Bob. Okay, gentlemen, we'll look for more action in the second period. Hope the Blues can come up big. Welcome back to Chicago Stadium with Ken Wilson. I'm Dan Kelly. The Blackhawks lead the Blues 2-1 to one as we move into the second period. Blues scored first. Herkus from Roberts and McKegney on a power play at 237. Larmer tied it for the Hawks from Savard and Vibe at 451. But then the breakaway goal by Everett Santafas unassisted at 639. Shots favored the Blues, 16-10. Here we go at the second period, and here's Ken Wilson. All right, Dan Kelly, Keith Brown from center ice, shoots the puck in for Chicago, and Bothwell feeds it back through center ice. Too far for Sutter. The length of the ice, Nyland back to touch it, and just 15 seconds into the middle period, icing against the Blues, and the faceoff will come back near Greg Millen. A reminder again, game five of this series at the arena Tuesday night. Tickets for the Blues and the Blackhawks on sale at the arena box office. All famous bar ticket now outlets or by calling dial ticks at 434-6600. And you can charge your tickets to Visa, MasterCard, or Discover Card. Hope to see you at the arena on Tuesday night for game five. In front of Millen, the faceoff, Doug Gilmore on the law, on the ice. Murdoch, the coach of the Blackhawks, counters with the Savard line. Five on his left, Larmer on his right. Larmer gets the draw. Back to McGill, a shot knocked down by Savard, kicked out by Millen. Bothwell takes out five, and Larmer gets the puck in the corner for Chicago. Tries to feed to the point, does to Trent Yanni, moving in, stops in the corner. Bothwell will chase him. Yanni dumps the puck behind the net. Benning up in five, and Gilmore gets the puck. A left wing pass to Sutter, shoveling it ahead to Bothwell. He gets it over the Chicago line, and Yanni takes over. Blues looking to change. Pass to Savard. Coming to center ice, out of his own end. Ahead behind five. The puck will slide wide of Millen. Five and Benning tie each other up. Bothwell ahead to Raglan. On to Mahar with a head of steam over the line. He's knocked down. And McGill clears the puck back to the Blues defense. Benning falls down. A loose puck slapped to center ice. Brought in offside by Steve Larmer. And we'll have a neutral faceoff with the Blues trailing the Blackhawks 2-1. to one. Well, some Blues fans here again tonight. Hello to Mom, Monica, and Kathy from Gerhardt and Denise. Also, a big Blues bush sign from Ron Grabowski and Dave Posniak of St. Louis who are here. They say they carry this sign around and they risk their lives by carrying that big Blues bush sign around Chicago Stadium. And I guess they probably do. This is a tough place for a visiting Blues fan. 
Just think, though, it's a lot safer inside the building than it is outside. Oh, wow. <laughs> Early in the second period, Blues trail 2-1. to one. Federko facing off against Troy Murray, who wins the draw. Nyland drives the puck in. Millen can't stop it behind the goal. At the right point, Keith Brown, a slap shot. Knocked away by Millen into the corner. Paul Cavallini checked. Then Lemieux comes in. He bumps there out of the corner. Troy Murray in front out of the reach of Santa Pass. He keeps the puck in the blue zone. And it comes loose to Federko. He backhands it out to center ice. Kirk Graham doing some good work that time in the blue zone for Chicago. Keith Brown clears the center ice to Graham. Moving in on the right wing over the line. Checked by Roberts, his former Minnesota teammate. McKegney can't get the puck out. Federko gets it. Boy, Troy Murray took a big hit. Blues in their own end. Roberts to his blue line. At center ice to Lemieux. And the play offside at the Chicago line. Just two minutes into the middle period, which has been scoreless. Everett Santa Pass, who scored the go-ahead goal in the first period for Chicago, now leaving the ice. He is the second full-blooded Indian to ever play with the Blackhawks. I'm going to give you a trivia question. Who was the first? You should know that type of stuff, right? I know about hockey players going back. Well, you know more about hockey like I did when you were in the 50s and 60s. Well, in the 50s and 60s, I knew everything. In the 70s, I went to Hawaii and became a beach cover. Don't ask anyway, me guy in the 70s. Anyway, the guy's name was Fred Saskamos. I read it in a Chicago book today. And he played his last season with Chicago. Of course, you know the answer to that. No. What year? You mean the year? Sure. Give me the press guide. I'll tell you. From center ice, the Blues shoot it in. Back for it. Yanni, he's on defense with McGill. He's crowded, has to lift the puck through center ice. It slides right to Millen. He's forced to make a save. Bothwell with a puck in the corner to Benning. Up to Gino Cavallini, too far. McGill keeps the puck in at the point, slides it behind the Blues net to Savard. Moving along the far board, Savard checked, and Mahar comes out. Quick left wing pass ahead of Gino Cavallini. The puck left loose at center ice. Benning shoots it in right on the McGill stick. Five, and Benning mix it up at center ice. Gill fires in from center ice around the boards behind Millen in the corner. Benning, oh, this is shot by Bye. Bye will get a penalty. Now, oh, Benning is cross-checked across the face by Bye, who is going to be penalized. Here comes Mahar. He wants to get it by, and the linesman and referee have all they can do to keep the Blues away from Rick Vibe. Oh, was that a vicious act by Rick Vibe, who already was going to be penalized. Benning at least has gotten up and appears to be all right. And Dan, that should be at least a pair of minors to Vibe at the very least. Well, the Blues get upset at Vibe because he wears a full face mask. And you can't get at him unless you have a gun. And that's their big problem with Vive, at least when you talk to them, that well, I, I agree with you. He was getting a penalty anyway, and he's got to get more because of the second shot he gave to Benning. The original shot is there, and that's when he's getting the penalty. And then he comes right back after Benning and cross-checked him across the back of the net. Two minutes for high sticking, two minutes for cross And he does get a double minor. This is St. Louis Blues Hockey. Rick Five gets a double minor, one for cross-checking, one for high sticking. And the Blues will be on a power play right now. 17-13 left in the second period. Blues have scored their only goal in this game on the power play tonight. And they will have the man advantage right now. They are one for three in the power play tonight. In this series, they've had 25 power plays and scored six goals. Blues have the puck from the draw in their own zone. Gilmore, Benning, Hall, Federko, and McKegney. Here's Brett Hall at center ice. Right wing pass to McKegney, and Federko, surprised by the pass, is offside. And the Blues have 3.48 to go in their power play. What a fine opportunity here for the Blues to tie this one at two. Here's the Blues alignment. They have Federko, Hall, and McKegney up front. With Zingra out of there, Gilmore drops back as a point man with Benning. And that's the alignment the Blues have on the ice right now. 
for Chicago. Nyland and Brown on defense. Troy Murray and Graham up front. Face off in front of the St. Louis bench in the neutralized area. Three minutes have gone by. Second period. 2-1 Blues trail. Here's Benning carrying in. He gets a mean elbow from Graham. Loses the puck and Brown fires at the length of the ice. Now one thing about Benning in his first two NHL seasons. He hasn't been overly tough. He's taken his share. And he could probably afford to be a little stronger and a little tougher. Gilmore to Federko in over the Chicago line. He stops. There'll be a penalty. A penalty coming up. And it apparently will be against Brett Hall. Meanwhile, on the previous play by Graham, on the boards on Benning, I thought he could have had a penalty, too. He had his elbow up. Gregson looked the other way, but now gives Brett Hull a penalty. All of a sudden, for the next two minutes, the two teams will each play one short on the ice. It's a high-sticking penalty to Brett Hull at 323 of the second period. Hull off for the Blues. Vive is off for Chicago. Well, the play I'm talking about, Benning moved down the left wing boards. And I thought Graham had his elbow up. Meanwhile, Gregson had been kind of taken out of the play, so he maybe didn't see it the way we did. He had been bumped along the boards just prior to that. Now Gregson over at the Blues bench talking to Martin, Cavallini, and Raglan about something. The opening game of this series at the arena, the Blues won it handily 4-1. to one. Game 2 in St. Louis won by the Blues 3-2 to two. last night. Here at the stadium in Chicago, the Blackhawks got off to an early start, scoring three early goals. They went on to a 6-3 victory. Now the Blues trailing 2-1 early in the second period. Both teams are short a man. A situation you don't see that often anymore in the NHL. Graham on the ice, starting out from behind his own goal. Trying to get away from Mahar, having a tough time of it at center ice, over skates the puck. And Nyland poke check by Herkus. And the puck goes to Chicago in their own end. Mahar, Herkus, Benning, and Bothwell in front of Millen for the Blues. Blackhawks in their own zone. Brown stick handling with a puck. Feeds out to Nyland. To Troy Murray in over the line. He's ridden into the corner by Bothwell. There's a minute 25 to go in the Hall penalty. When he comes out, the Blues again will have the man advantage. Graham digs the puck out of the corner. Back to the left point to Nyland. A wrist shot. Knocked down in front. Good stop by Millen. And Benning starts out. Ahead to Mahar at the Chicago line. He pulls up. Shovels the puck wide of the Chicago net. And Savar will wind it up. Both teams changing players. Savar forced back right in front of Pang by Gino Cavallini. To Nyland. Rink wide to Bob Murray. Back to Savar. Moving in over the line. Trying to get around Paul Cavallini. A backhand shot. And Millen the save. Paul Cavallini, a pass to brother Gino. On to Gilmore at center ice. In over the Chicago line to Gino. Cavallini, a shot just wide. Loose puck at the side of the net. A battle for it. Roberts moves in. Now behind the Chicago net, Roberts. Blues have to be careful. Their point men have moved up. Roberts forced to center ice. Loses the puck. Here's Larmer with Savard. Savard moves in. Can't handle the puck. And there'll be a penalty against the Blues. Gordy Roberts got caught in the other team's end with nobody at the point. Hawks almost had a breakaway. Roberts came around the net, but there was nobody at the point to give it to him. And then he lost control. And Savard had a breakaway, although he lost control of the puck. Saint Meanwhile, Louis Roberts Saint got a penalty on the play. Holding a holding penalty. So now the shoe switches. And Chicago will have a power play. Four against three. Here's the penalty situation. In the penalty box, five for Chicago, 152 left. Brett Hull has 28 seconds left in his penalty. And now Gordy Roberts in there. So the Hawks with a 28-second power play coming up. 4.55, the time of the penalty to Gordy Roberts. You could see that play developing. You could tell with Paul Cavallini and Gordy Roberts moving in that the Blues were just seconds away from near disaster. Well, Paul Cavallini never should have moved in, Ken. Roberts went in, had control of the puck. He has to stay back there. You can't have nobody back on the point. Face off near Millen. Won by the Hawks. Troy Murray back to Savard at the right point. To Yanni at the left point. Troy Murray and Larmer in front over to Savard. 
Back to Yanni. Now Savard, right circle to Larmer, and fun. And a pass fails to connect with Troy Murray. Chicago the man advantage and the lead 2-1. to one. Yanni moving into the slot over to Savard. His pass for Larmer gets away, but Larmer gets the puck back to Denny Savard. His feet in front broken up. Bothwell to Mahar. Long shot kicked out by Pang. Blues are changing. Blackhawks would like to change. Savard from center ice flips the puck in wide of Miller. Now the Blues are back at even strength with Chicago. Four skaters aside and over the line. A blast goes wide by Herkus. Benning from the point. A bouncing shot right on. Pang a stick save. Nyland to Ludzik as the Hawks are deep in their own zone. Back to Bob Murray behind the net. Coming up to the six-minute mark of the second period. It's been a scoreless period. Both teams are shorthanded at the moment. Dwayne Sutter up the right wing. Checked by Benning. Knocked down. Paul Cavallini gives the puck to Herkus. He'll start out. Benning still mixing it up with Dwayne Sutter. Here's Herkus in over the line. Two on two with Brian Sutter. He has a bad angle. A weak shot. Right on and paying the save. Coming out of his own end is Ludzik. Two on one break. Benning back. Dwayne Sutter on his left. Ludzik pass to Dwayne Sutter. Off the stick of Benning. And Benning and Dwayne Sutter mix it up again. And Terry Gregson, the referee, stops play with 24 seconds left in Vives penalty time and 32 seconds left in Gordy Roberts penalty. And we're going to get another penalty on this play. I think it may be against well, it's going to be Paul Cavallini for slashing. Benning, meanwhile, made an excellent play, breaking up a two-on-one. I did not see where Cavallini was or that infraction, but now the Blues will be two men short again. Chicago just won. Again, the point we made earlier in the game, you have to be disciplined. You take too many penalties. You give the other club too many power play opportunities. And you can only defend so many. The Blues, again, are shorthanded. Just a few minutes ago, Rick Vive picked up a pair of minors. The Blues had a power play for four minutes, but Roberts' penalty and now Paul Cavallini's penalty wash out a wonderful opportunity. Right now, the Blues will be two men short. Chicago only one, so they'll have a four against three power play. Eventually, they'll have a two-man advantage for about eight seconds. Now the faceoff near Millen, won by the Hawks. Johnny at the left point, right point to Savard, moving into the slot, passes off to the side to Larmer. Four against three, Savard, point, Johnny left point. Troy Murray and Larmer are up front over to Savard to Troy Yanni. He fakes a shot to Savard in the right corner to Larmer. Back in front, Savard, a shot off Mahar wide. Now the Hawks have a two-man advantage. Five moves into the play. Savard to Yanni. Moving in, a wrist shot. Hits Bothwell. The puck back to Savard. Now Roberts back on. Savard ready to shoot. In front to Troy Murray. A shot stop. Loose puck, a scramble. Mahar gets a stick at it. Clears it into the corner. Mahar behind his net with a puck. Checked by Vive. And Bothwell can't clear it. Savard keeps it in to Young. Takes a shot over to Larmer. He shoots. Shoots high and wide. Over a minute to go in the Chicago power play. At the point, Young will drive the Face off. Brown 
over to Nyland. They're in their own zone. Up front, Ludzik, Graham, and Santa Pass, who's checked at his own blue line. Ludzik gets the puck, fires it in. Millen stops it behind the net. Plays it into the corner for McKegney. On with Federko and Lemieux. Federko gets the puck out to Lemieux. Now to Benning up from the defense over the Chicago line. He pulls up at the left point. Trying to get the puck ahead. Can he's checked by Brown. Now a two-on-one break up the Santa Pass. Back to Ludzik. He's checked. Here's Nyland moving in. He takes a bouncing shot in front. That deflects wide of Millen. In the corner, Lemieux bumps. Paul Cavallini moves in with Santa Pass and Graham there for Chicago, and they hold the puck for a faceoff as Santa Pass and Paul Cavallini bump, and the players angle up and mix it up in the corner with play stopped, and 11.54 to go in the period. Santa Pass just wants to get out of the group and finally is pulled aside by linesman Ron Asseltine. 3-1 Chicago, second period. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. Santa Pass, two minutes for rubbing at 8.06. Well, Santa Pass Black Hawk is and third of the playoffs. Paul Cavallini gets up right on the This is the result of a skirmish in the corner. When Santa Pass got an elbow in on Cavallini, he retaliated. And then that brought a crowd. Tell you one thing, this is a very intense hockey game, isn't it? Very much so, very physical. Not much ice open to the point. McGill, a stick saved by Millen, and the puck goes in the crowd. Chicago, a good scoring opportunity right from the faceoff. Let's pause 15 seconds for station identification. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. KPLR-TV St. Louis, Channel 11, the ones to watch. When the face off in their own end, clear to center ice. McGill at his own line for Chicago. Shoots it to center ice. Boswell knocked down there. Battling for the puck. Gilmore and Vincelette in front of the St. Louis bench. Now Yanni checked by Hall. Hall bumped in the corner. Good play by Brett Hall going behind the net. Tries to center. Hits the side of the net. And Graham can't clear. Kept in by Dirk in front of the function by Hall. And trying to get a shot. Tino Cavallini. He sent sprawling. And Graham comes to center ice where he's stopped by Gilmore. Pass to Brett Hall. He's checked, and the Hawks control in their own end. 11-10 to go in the second period. 3-1 Chicago. Puck shot in by the Hawks. Boswell drilled to the boards by Vincent. Loose puck comes to Presley. A shot, and that deflects wide. In the corner, Gino Cavallini just clears the puck the length of the ice to relieve the pressure. Manson back, icing against St. Louis. The 9.09 mark of the second period. The only goal in this period at 7.21. Five on a power play from Yanni and Larmer. Jim Bothwell on the receiving end of a tough check from Pinsolette. A lot of contact in this game, and I think the Blackhawks are getting the best of it. And aside from Gino Cavallini, every time he's out there, seems to knock somebody down. The Blues, by the way, have had only one shot on goal in this period. Benning from behind his own net. Gets the puck ahead, not out. Hawks get a break. Lundzik, the shot. Big save by Miller in the corner. Chicago, Presley back to Manson. A drive hits Mahar, deflects the center ice. And Bob Murray plays it back into the St. Louis zone onto Benning stick. He's on defense with Roberts. He just clears it out. Bob Murray waits for Ludzik to get onside, drills it back in. Benning starts from behind his net, looking things over. Chicago with three man in, long pass, too far for McKegney. And Bob Murray fires the puck back in from center ice, Roberts retreating. Chicago changing on the go. They lead 3-1 in game four, trying to even it. Roberts check, Bob gets the puck. Knocked down by Robert Savard, coming out of the corner. He's upended. No call, the fans don't like it. Roberts has lost his stick, takes out by Savard behind the net, centering for Lauder, deflected away. And Raglan wisely shoots the puck the length of the ice. Bob Murray touches it, icing against the Blues. And the Hawks have played very well since their third goal. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. Blackhawks here in the second period. They have the only goal. They've been aided in 
been abetted by several power plays, and they've outshot the Blues in this period to this point, 8-1. to one. Blues start out, lose the puck at center ice. Brown back in his own end. The Chicago defenseman clears it into the blue zone. Back forward is Bothwell. Chased by Savard, who knocks the puck away. Savard spun around by Bothwell behind the net. Five there, ends up with a puck in the corner. To the point to Nyland. Right point to Brown. He shoots deflected wide off the Blues player. Nyland a shot. Knocked down in front to Savard. A drive. And that's blocked by Bothwell. And Gino Cavallini clears the center ice. Chicago's red hot at the moment. They already lead 3-1 to one as Chicago shoots the puck in again. Both teams are changing. Here's Robert Dirk slowly in his own zone. Out to Gilmore. Nice deflection on the wing to Hall. Hall moving in around. Yawning inside of the net. Nice move in front of shot. A save. Another shot. He scores. Brett Hall. Oh, what a terrific couple of moves by Brett Hall to move the Blues back to within a goal. A 23-year-old rookie with a brilliant future. Brett Hall just gets his fourth goal of the playoffs. Look at the poise. Moves in. Goes to his backhand. Stop. Got the rebound and put it upstairs. The kid is going to score some goals in this league. And over 30 in the regular season as a rookie, and this is his fourth in four playoff games. That's a heck of a move, Dan. That's an almost impossible move to make. He was literally over the goal line, the end red line, still came back and beat Pang. That's terrific. It's three to two. Always fun to see a Blues goal, but when it's done so brilliantly and artistically, now Chicago in their own end. Hopefully the Blues now can apply some pressure. Graham will start out to Troy Murray. Graham the right wing. Troy Murray the center. To the line. Santa Pass on the other wing. Ahead to Graham in the corner. He's checked. The feed to Santa Pass. He loses him, and here's Todd Ewan. Trying to get out of his own end. He'll move to center ice. Todd Ewan spun around. Now Sutter gets the puck in over the line. He's poke checked by Nyland in the puck at center ice. Roberts with it. Over to his defense mate, Paul Cavallini. He hits the back of Gilmore's skate with a pass, and it's loose at center ice. Swept in by Ewan. Brown back for Chicago to Nyland. Eight minutes remaining in the second period. Each team has scored once. It's 3-2 Chicago. All scoring at 11.08. Now Graham with a good move. In over the line. Tries to cut in front. Can't. From behind the net, attempts to center, unable to. Now Ludzik, ridden to the boards by Federko. Paul Cavallini, stick handling, right in front of Miller. Chicago changing. Blues want a change. Paul Cavallini shoots the puck in. Hang will play it. Out at center ice, Manson and Paul Cavallini have words as Dwayne Sutter skates up the right wing and can't get by Benny. He's smashed by Ludzik. Here's Manson with a puck. Long shot sails over the glass into the crowd and plays stop with 7.22 to go in the second period. That's right everywhere. On that Blues goal at 11.08, Hall gets it. Gilmore and Dirk get the assists, and Jacques Martin's team has moved back to within one of the Blackhawks. The Blues held the lead early in the game. Kirk is a power play goal at 2.47 of the opening period, but Larmer and Santa Pass scored for Chicago in the first period, and it was 2-1 Blackhawks after 20 minutes. Five scored a power play goal here in the second period at 7.21, and then the Hall goal to bring the Blues back to within one at 11.08. Both teams are at full strength. Federko centering Lemieux, who's back after a long layoff, and McKegney. Puck from center ice, shot into the Chicago zone, quickly a line change, Mahar out with Sutter and Raglan. Savard at center ice, flips the puck into the St. Louis end, and Raglan sends it right back out. Puck will go deep in the Chicago territory, Pang out of the net, Mahar upended, and he slides into the back of Pang, knocking him down, and play is stopped by referee Terry Gregson, I think because he feels that Mahar and Pang are both shaken up somewhat. Here comes Norm Mackey out. We'll check on Mahar. It's 3-2 Chicago. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. Well, the penalty is against Chicago and Keith Brown and the Blues who cut the Hawk lead to 3-2 with a chance of the power play. Pang was out of the net. Mahar gets upended by Brown and then he had to slide into the little goaltender who got upended. And that's why Brown gets a penalty. Meanwhile, 7 one to play in the period. Blues were lifeless. They were trailing 3-1. Chicago were in 
complete control of this game and then the brilliant goal by Brett Hull to cut the lead to three to two and it'll be interesting to see now that the Blues are on a power play if that will have fired the Blues up enough to bounce back. The interesting thing Dan when you talk about Chicago they always have the dimension that many teams don't have the superstar Denny Savard who can excite a crowd excite a team and score some amazing goals maybe Brett Hall now is that kind of player for the St. Louis Blues. Bang has to make a save from the face off back to Benning at the left point. Blues man advantage setting up. Here's Hall along the near boards in front. McKegney knocked down the puck, trickles the pang. He knocks it ahead to Larmer, who's playing without a helmet. Larmer sashaying through center ice, lets the shot go, deflects off Gilmore right to Miller, and he makes the save. A minute 35 to go in the Blues power play, looking to tie it here in the second period. Gilmore in over the line, pulls up along the far boards. He's got McKegney at the right point. He gets the puck. Ahead to Gilmore. Benning's at the left point. Behind the net, Federko. Red Hall has moved to the corner. Gilmore's in front. Now to the corner, Federko behind the net to Gilmore. Centering all the way to the blue line. McKegney fakes a shot. Nice pass. Benning moves and shoots. And a save by Pang on Brian Benning. Bob Murray attempts to clear camp. Blues with a lot of good pressure here. They have the man advantage still for over a minute. Gilmore back to McKegney at the right point. To Gilmore in the circle. Federko behind the net. He's got Gilmore and Hall in front. Now Gilmore in the corner for the puck. Gilmore stops at the top of the circle to McKegney. Back to Gilmore. 48 seconds left in the power play. Gilmore shoots and scores! Doug Gilmore as the Blues patiently work the power play and tie it at three. 3-3 three, three now the score and things looking better for the fellows with the blue note on their chest. Gilmore from the top of the circle rifling one with trapping in front of Pang and Gilmore ties it up. Nylon right in the line of fire. And that may have distracted Pang enough. Meanwhile, the shot by Gilmore almost had eyes as it found the short side. And a costly penalty to Brown. And the Blues have scored their second power play goal of the game. Hawks have had two. This game tied 3-3. Now, 25 minutes, 47 seconds left in regulation time. It is even. Blues looking for a win that will give them a commanding 3-1 lead in the best of seven series. And the Blues control the puck from the center ice faceoff. Roberts flips it in. Bob McGill goes back. From behind his net, McGill, the former Maple Leaf. Stick Hanley moving well to the checkered red line. Long shot in wide. Santa Pass takes out Herkus. The puck goes to Paul Cavallini. And he clears it off the boards back into the Chicago zone. Out of his own territory, McGill to Troy Murray. He shoots it in. Millen can't stop the puck behind the net. Doug Evans tied up with Santa Pass. Hansen from the point. A shot. Love save. Millen. Paul Cavallini has a pass intercepted. Troy Murray flips it behind the net. In the corner, Presley bumped by Roberts. Kirkus moves in, battling Santa Pass. Buck loose. And a hand pass by the Blues. And St. Louis is stopped in the St. Louis zone. 5 one to go. Period two. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. Doug Gilmore out on the ice. He got that last Blues goal. His second of the playoffs from McKegney and Federko at 14-13. Each team has now had two power play goals in this game. And it's tied 3-3. Savard and Gilmore in the faceoff. Bothwell gets the puck, clears the center ice. It's loose, and it's picked off by Hall. Hall moves in, can't get around McGill and Vive. Manson leaves the puck in the corner for Rick Vive. Deep in his own zone. He's checked by Sutter. They mix it up behind the play. McGill to center ice, shoots it in. Sutter and Vive want to go. I'll tell you, Brian Sutter is in a debate. He's talking a mile a minute. He's got the jaws really cracking, and you know he's saying, look it, why don't you take that mask off the full plastic shield and let's talk about it then Brian Sutter of course plays without a mask of any sort and probably would just as soon play without a helmet there'll be some penalties here Sutter and Vive to the penalty box I guess that would kind of bother you you had a mask on and I didn't and I wanted to fight you all the time get under your skin a little bit yeah it might you'd probably yell <laughs> 3-3 three, three. in the second period. The Blues St. have Louis goals Finley, from Herkus, Hall, and Gilmore. Chicago goals by Larmer, Santa Pass, 
and by the shots are even two just about the Blues have 21 and Chicago has 20 offsetting coincidental penalties to Vive and Sutter for roughing at 15 19 of the second period Boy, this series Dan is really just warming up and it's back home to the arena Tuesday night just thinking the same thing Tuesday night that arena should be jumping for game five remember the arena box office open every day 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. tickets also available at all famous bar ticket now outlets from the face off Manson a drive right on mill the save Mahar over skates the puck at his own end tripped up by Presley Vincent along the boards to Presley in the corner leaves it for Ludzik he's bumped by Mahar they battle for the puck in the corner lock skates and frees the puck against the boards for a stoppage with 424 remaining in the second period. It's been a good physical hockey game. Two teams going all out, and certainly the Blues still with the upper hand, leading two games to one. Meanwhile, a little earlier in this period, the Blackhawks seem to be in complete control. They had a three to one lead. They were out shooting the Blues. Eight to one at one point. Blues with the two goals on only five shots in this period. So, Hang maybe not as invincible as the Blues have thought here at the stadium. Hole oh, from center ice, a drive, gloved by Pang, and he whacks the puck all the way to the Blues line. Ludzik picks it up there in front off Gilmore's skate and covering up his Bothwell. He can't clear it out. Gino Cavallini knocks the puck ahead to Gilmore. Two on two at center ice with Hall. Hall gets the pass. He'll shoot. Ooh, and just getting a piece of it is Pang. Wow, does Hall have an unbelievable shot. Chicago clears the puck the length of the ice. Millen stops it. Sets it down for Roberts. Head Manning to Gilmore. He'll shoot the puck in, sliding it right to Pang. Both teams changing players. 3.35 to go in the second period. Game four of the Norris Division semifinals. Wayne Sutter shoots the puck in wide and Millen back is McKegney. He's checked in the corner by Santa Pass. Six players now against the boards vying for the puck. It comes to Gino Cavallini. He can't get it out. Bothered by Troy Murray who comes out of the crowd. Sutter with a puck for Chicago. He's stopped by Roberts. Ripped to the boards. Back to Brown. A shot the puck in front. as I mentioned, with a broken hand. Everett Santa Pass, full-blooded Indian, and a man that the Blackhawks are counting for, very big in the future. Meanwhile, the present ain't too bad. It's a second goal of the evening. Face off at center ice, back to Nyland. He comes to the red line, shoots it in for Chicago. Dwayne Sutter after it. Beaten to the puck by Benny. Ahead too far for Evans. Brown from the point of shot four feet wide. Kept in by Santa Pass. Swept behind the Blues net. Bettings there. Boy, Chicago's really fired up now. Blues clear to center ice. Highland whistles it right back in. 2.50 to go. Second period. 4-3 Chicago. The Blues have outshot the Hawks. 23-22. Dangerous pass. Up the middle to Evans and Troy Murray. Breaks it up. Backhands the puck wide. Here's Benning. He ought to ice it. Clears the Federico at center ice, one-on-one -on -one with Nala. A pass for Evans. He is interfered with, with by Brown, who's drilled by McKegney, who's slammed into by Dwayne Sutter. And everybody trying to get at each other now. There'll be a penalty to Keith Brown, most likely for interference. McKegney and Dwayne Sutter having words. Nylon and Federko are wrapped up. Brown and Evans are having a bit of a chat and a sachet also, and the officials trying to cool things Black down. Well, the Hawks were going to get a penalty. McKegney came in there and retaliated with such ferocity that he may have drawn one as well. He and Dwayne Sutter continue to talk to each other about the play. Hawks lead it four to three. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. Keith Brown will get a penalty. 
Santa passes goal at 16:48, giving Chicago the lead. Keith Brown just going into the penalty box, getting an assist, the lone assist on that goal. Federko going into the penalty box for the Blues, and referee Terry Gregson will explain things to the officials, the off-ice officials for this two-game set here in Chicago are from Minnesota. Gregson says, everybody get away. I'll talk to Denny Savard and Brian Sutter, and he explains things. He says, first of all, there's a penalty to Keith Brown. No question about that. He interfered with a Blues player. Then here's what I saw, and that's the question. What did Terry Gregson see after that? Here's the announcement. For Bernie Federko, two minutes for roughing. Blackhawk penalties, number 22, Gary Nyland, two minutes for roughing. Number four, Keith Brown, two minutes for tripping at 17.35. So the Blues will still have a power play out of this. I didn't see Nyland. I uh, guess he was the player that was involved with Paderka. It was more McKegney and Wayne Sutter that tried to get things going, but I guess they just talked. Meanwhile, the original penalty, Brown, pulling down Doug Evans as he moved in, and that's why the Blues are going to have a manpower advantage right now. McKegney came flying in, and then Island and Pedurko got involved, and that's why they get the roughing penalties. Sutter and McKegney were not exactly having a Sunday afternoon chat in the park. Face-off will be in the neutral center ice area. Blues power play. They already have two power play goals in the game. Chicago has the same. Chicago leads 4-3. Blues have the puck in their own end. Gilmore. He's at the right point to Benning. He's playing left point to center ice to Hall. Cutting in on the left wing. Can't get around Savard. Misses a McGill check behind the net. Manson takes out Herkus. Herkus trying to keep his feet does in the corner. Hall. Left point to Benning. McKegney's in front. He has not had many scoring chances tonight. And a pass for Herkus gets away, and Larmer gets the puck to center ice with Savard. Savard always can be dangerous. Into the slot, he's checked, and Benning has the puck. Gives it to McKegney, and he'll come to center ice with a pass to Benning. Less than two minutes to go here in the second period. Herkus shoots the puck in, and it is offside St. Louis. A minute 39 to go in the period. 1.14 to go in the Blues power play. Let's pause for station identification. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. KPLR-TV St. Louis, Channel 11, the ones to watch. Still on a power play. By the way, if you're wondering where Gaston Gingra is, he was injured in the first period. Hyperextended elbow. Gilmore over the line to Herkus. Nicely to Hull. He shoots. Hang brilliantly out to make one save. Another stop on Hull on the rebound. And Hull has the puck again. A minute to go in the Blues power play. Just over a minute to go in the second period. Behind the net to Herkus. Blues looking to tie the score. Over to Gilmore on the far boards to Benning. Straight away at the blue line. Back to Gilmore. Fakes the shot. Shovels it to Herkus in front of McKegney, and he's poke check from the slot. Gilmore over to Herkus, a shot wide. Along the near boards, Brett Hall. Blues doing a fine job with a man advantage. Across the rink to Gilmore, bouncing puck. He gloves it ahead to McKegney, a hand pass. Stoppage of play, and the faceoff will go all the way back into the Blues zone. 58 seconds remaining in the second period. 33 seconds to go in Keith Brown's penalty. And Doug Gilmore playing on the point. He loves to move up. Brett Hull with one good chance. Then another weaker shot. And then a neat little move that kept the possession of the puck for the Blues. By Hull, who then got it back to the left point. Meanwhile, we're down to 58 seconds left in the period. 33 seconds left in the Blackhawk penalty. Hawks leading 4-3. It's a dandy at Chicago Stadium. Face off, not back in the blue zone, but out in the neutral area with the Blues hand pass with a man advantage. Ready for the face off, Herkus and Savard. Savard wins the draw, Chicago controlling. McGill taking his time in his own end, finds an opening, drives the punt the length of the ice. 48 seconds to go in the period. Boy, the Blues would get a big lift from a goal here, wouldn't they? Over to Herkus, over the checkered red line. Moves it around Manson, and he yanked down, and there'll be a penalty. Manson beaten on the play, yanks down the Blues player, and the Blues 
Bruins for 13 seconds will have a two-man advantage. What an opportunity here. 38 seconds left in the period. And a two-man advantage coming up. Herkus made an inside move. Manson was completely beaten. Went to the stick and hooked down Herkus. And now the Blues with a two-man advantage. And a big opportunity as they trail by a goal. And we'll have a face-off coming up deep in the Chicago zone. Herkus, McKegney, and Hull will be up front. Gilmore and Benning will be the point men normally. Jingra would be out there. He's injured, so they have Gilmore back. Sometimes in a two-man advantage situation, they'll put Brett Hull back there. And I really think he adds a whole new dimension to the power play as a point man with that big shot. Face off, scramble, and the puck to Larmer. He shoots at the length of the ice. Boy, what a huge face off that was. Savard against Herkus, and Savard did a good job. Gilmore starting out of his own end to Benning. With Hall, Herkus, McKegg, Benning moves in. Brown back on. Blues with a one-man advantage to Herkus. Into the corner to McKegg. 15 seconds to go in the period. Blues with a man advantage. Right point to Gilmore. Pass to Benning at the left point. Across and an angle pass to McKegg. Back to Gilmore. They shot. They score! Herkus deflects it in with five seconds to go in the period. And the Blues do take advantage to tie it at four. Oh, what a move by Herkus in front of the net for a deflection on the shot from the point. The Blues get their third power play goal of this game. Tony Herkus gets his second goal of this game. And the rookie from North Dakota positioned perfectly. Gilmore and Herkus there to deflect it home. 4-4, four, four, five seconds left in the period. Again, Gilmore at the point, letting the shot go. And Herkus positioned perfectly and put it underneath the left leg or left pad of Darren Pang. There's a happy Tony Herkus, two power play goals tonight, and really getting the opportunity, most likely because Jingra has been hurt. I Four think we're going to have a lot of chance to say Herkus and Hull for the next few years, God willing. You better believe it. Four seconds to go with a face-off, and the siren sounds, and that is the end of the second period, and the Blues find themselves in very fine shape going into the third period here of game four. Tony Herkus has had quite a night, a couple of goals, also goals from Brett Hall and Doug Gilmore, and that threesome figures to play a lot of great hockey for many, many years for the St. Louis Blues. Shots on goal after 40 minutes. The Blues 26 and the Blackhawks 23. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. Now, let's go back to Chicago Stadium. Dan Kelly, Ken Wilson are standing by with the second period highlights. Gentlemen, you've got a barn burner on your hands. A uh, terrific hockey game, a typical Blues-Blackhawk confrontation, and we'll have one in St. Louis on Tuesday night. Bob, we have five goals to show you, so Mr. Wilson, go to work. Here's the first goal. Vibe gets it. It's a deflection. Yanni from the point at 721. Vibe just did a great job. Yanni and Larmer get the assist. 3-1 Chicago, and you get worried at that point. Then that Brett Hall goal, Dan, really was a great goal. He comes, makes a fine move. He goes over the end red line. You think, well, no chance. Look at this move. That's a Gretzky Lemieux type move, and I don't mean Jocelyn Lemieux. And then he gets a rebound. Boom, upstairs, no problem. Gilmore and Dirk assist. The Blues back to within one at that point. Then the power play goal. The Blues get it. Gilmore top of the circle. He's actually on the right point, but he's crisscrossed with McKegney. Low shot, bang. McKegney and Federico assist. The Blues have tied it at three. Chicago comes back. Keith Brown gets it in front. Santa Pass does some fancy work with his stick in his hands to score his second of the game at 16.48 of the second period to give Chicago the lead. Then the Blues had a two-man advantage. One Hawk came back. Low shot. Herkus, what a great deflection from Gilmore's drive at 19.55 to tie it at four. And the Blues are in very good position right now. And, Bob, we just have a classic hockey game going on here at a third period to watch coming up. Well, thanks a lot, gentlemen. Let's have a big third period for the Blues. Don't just underway is Troy Murray for Chicago. Gives it to Everett Santa Pass, who fires it into the Blues zone. Back is Brian Benning, trying to clear it out of there. It hits Sutter, bounces back near the Blues goal. And then upended in front of the net is Presley. 
And the Blues are going to get an early penalty here. Deb Gilmore to the penalty box for upending Wayne Presley. That's the St. Louis Blues hockey. Gilmore picks up a hooking penalty at 31 seconds. Blues are a little flat-footed here in their own zone. And it costs you. Now you need to be fired up right when that puck is dropped to begin the period. And a rather silly penalty on Gilmore's part. Millen had the puck. Here's Murray at the point, shooting high off the glass. Savard in to get it to Larmer at the point. Larmer back to Savard, shot. Partially blocked, bounces to Vibe at the side of the net. Mahar and Rick Vibe do battle. In comes Bothwell, but Mahar had fallen and fallen on top of the puck. And the referee, Gregson, lost sight. Whistle will play dead. Chicago with a couple of power play goals. If you go back to the first goal of the game, it came just as Savard's penalty time was up, exactly two minutes after his penalty was called. Officially, that Herkus goal early in the first period was an even strength goal. So instead of having three power play goals, as you really feel the Blues do, on the official score sheet, they have two. Here's Larmer at the point. Over to Savard. Back to Larmer, shooting. Millen a save on that. And then he held on to it. There's a good example right in front of the net. Everybody get a man. That's the way to play it. And the rebound looked like it was imminent there. And the Blues defensemen, Dirk and Bothwell, just did a super job there. Everybody grab a man. And then if there is a rebound, even then you don't have to worry about it. I'll tell you what, the official statistician is wrong on that first goal. Savard went off at the 47 mark. The goal was at 247. Penalized player can't come on until 2.48, so... And Savard was in the box when they did score it. Oh, yeah, it should be a power play goal. Here's Savard to Vibe, side of the net, Chicago has the lead again! That's his second. He really never seemed to get the shot away. Tries to come in front, really tries a pass. It seemed to go off Bothwell's stick through the skates of Millen. Vive trying to pass it in front, and it went off Bothwell, surprised Millen completely. Tough, tough break for the Blues, and Chicago has another power play goal. Five to four, the Hawks lead. Third power play goal of the night for Chicago. In back is Gordy Roberts for the Blues to Paul Cavallini to Tony McKechnie. Now to Jocelyn Lemieux at center ice. Gives to McKechnie trying to break in. Keith Brown tried to flip it up. Santa Pass shot at the center. Here's Presley following as he hit the blue line and the Blues clear it back to center. But Dirk will try to break up. He's checked and now McKechnie into center ice for Roberts. Gordy Roberts cutting in. Gives it to McKechnie. Centered out in front. Cleared away by Payne. And then Santa Pass shoots it into center. Joey Murray. But Presley on right wing. Gordy Roberts knocked it away. To Padurko. Here's Padurko at center. He got upended. Blues Roberts following up on the play. Gives it to McKegney. Long shot. Payne handles that. Blackhawks start back. Here's Nyland on left wing. Nyland through center ice. Got it in. Nyland behind the net, leaving it for Gilmore. Now to Brett Hull, who's had 10 shots on goal in this game in the first two periods. Gino Cantalini tips it in. Payne back to the net to clear it away. Bothwell trying to hold it into Hull. Hull then checked, and Dwayne Sutter shoots it away. Race for the puck. Ludzik and Benning. Ludzik gets to it. Ludzik center to McGill. A drive. Off the blocker of Millen and then off the glass. Blues. Hull can't get it up. Ludzik in the corner. Now Gilmore getting it to Brett Hull. And Hull for the Blues to Gino Cavallini. Who puts it into the Chicago zone. Paying back to the net to clear it up. And then Chicago Savard shoots it down the ice. Gilmore hustling back. Gives it to Gordy Roberts. Blues trailing 5-4. Roberts to Ragland. He's into the hot zone. Flipped it in front. Paying clear. Paul Cavallini. Knocked it down. He's into the corner. Centered out in front. Payne shot it away. Into the far corner. Rick Mahar back to Roberts at 
with the point. Rudy Roberts shooting one wide of the target. Sutter tied up by Murray. Center delayed penalty coming up to Murray on the play. And the Blues will have another man advantage coming up. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. Penalty to Bob Murphy. Murray at 329. Five from Savard and Larmer at 111 on a power play to give Chicago the lead. This may have been a case of Sutter holding as much as Bob Murray, but Bob Murray gets the penalty. The Blues have the power play, and their power play tonight has been very, very effective. Here is Paderko getting it to McKechnie to Gilmore. Doug Gilmore at the right point into McKechnie. Into the corner to Federko. Back to McKechnie. Back on the point to Gilmore. Now to McKechnie. Shooting, paying the save. Big rebound and loves it. Gets it for the Blackhawks. And out he comes. And loves it. Flips it into the blue zone. Doug Gilmore back after for St. Louis. Gilmore to Federko. Federko into McKechnie, but knocked away by Brown. And it bounces up over the boards into the Chicago players' bench. One of the interesting aspects of the Blues offense tonight is McKegney with Jocelyn Lemieux playing early was asked to play on an off wing. He's playing right wing on the power play. And he has just had in the first four minutes of this third period his first two shots on goal. And of course McKegney in many games during the regular season had more shots than any other Blues player. He just seemed to get scoring opportunities by the bushel basket this season and had a brilliant season. The Blues on the power play have had two power play goals in the first period. Herkus really had a power play goal. Gilmore and Herkus in the second period. And the way we figure it, it is three for seven for the Blues with the man advantage tonight. Meanwhile, the Hawks cleared up over the boards. Right from the faceoff, and we get another faceoff deep in the St. Louis zone. Federko, McKegney, and Hall up front. Benning and Gilmore, the point man. And the faceoff is going to be deep in the Hawk zone. The other thing you have to keep in mind, Chicago very dangerous with short-handed goals. They had 18 over the regular season. Calgary led the league with 23. But Chicago, mainly because of Savard, very dangerous when short-handed. Here's Gilmore to Federko. Blues with the man advantage. Federko to McKechnie. Back to Bernie Federko. Back on the point to Gilmore. Over to Federko. Federko trying to maneuver in. Shoots one. Blocked at the defense. Now Benning at the point. Back of the goal to Brett Hull. To McKechnie. He gets muscled off the puck. And the Hawks Savard. Couldn't get it by Gilmore. Federko into McKechnie. Gilmore on the right wing boards. To Federko at the point. Back to Gilmore. Shoot it. Blocked by McGill. Right back to Gilmore. Gilmore trying to center it. Gilmore back on the point to Federko. Now back to Gilmore. Gilmore moves in. Feeds Benny. Shooting shot it wide of the target. Savard trying to break up. Savard feeds it. And it's knocked away by Federko. Red Hall is checked before he could get on track. 23 seconds left in the hot penalty. Gilmore back after it. Doug Gilmore through center ice. In across the line to Herkus. Tony Herkus on left wing. Back on the point for Gilmore. Lost it in the skates and Dwayne Sutter. Back for Chicago. Sutter upended by Gilmore. In to get the loose puck is Murray shooting it back to his own line. Where Nyland feeds it to Keith Brown. Bob Murray back on. The Hawks killed it off. Here's Paul Cavallini to Herkus. Into the Hawks zone for Herkus. Puts on the break, shoots, hang the save, Sutter center. Roberts back to Paul Cavallini, shooting deflected in front. Sutter after it. Paul Cavallini at the right point, moving in, center, they score! Deflected in by Herkus to get the hat trick. Tony Herkus, what a play, wow! Brian Sutter was very instrumental holding his brother Dwayne. been on the power play. Blues very aggressive with his man advantage. Paul Cavallini into the slot to Tony Herkins. But that play really was made by some 
Very good work by Brian Sutter. Now Dwayne Sutter and Herb Ragland want to go at it. I, and I'll tell, you, I'll tell you who else is there is Brian Sutter. He and Dwayne bumped at center ice, and they almost got into it. And that's what drew the crowd. The Sutter brothers at Chicago Stadium. Look at them there. Look at Brian. And Dwayne's really yapping at him. That's going to be a tough dinner back at the farm in June. It's lucky they have a lot of referees. Well, uh, the Hawks are upset because they thought the Blues should have had a penalty. And that's why Dwayne Sutter is incensed in the center ice area. Meanwhile, the Blues have tied it on Tony Herkus's third goal of this game. A hat trick for the rookie from North Dakota. Boy, what a game. The Blues got the first goal of the night. Herkus got it. He's gotten the most Saint recent, Louis but it's been comfort behind. Let's pause 15 seconds for station identification. This is St. Louis Blues Hockey. KPLR-TV St. Louis, Channel 11, the ones to watch. At 5.54, St. Louis goal scored by Herkus, assisted by Paul Cavallini and Sutter at 5.54. Herkus from Cavallini and Brian Sutter at 5.54. And each team has scored once here in the third period. It is 5-5. Here are the Blues. Paul Cavallini from the faceoff. Shoots it to the hawk line with Dave Manson back together. Now Manson trying to beat it to McGill. Delayed penalty coming up on the play to the Blues. Puck cleared to Manson. Penalty coming up on the Blues as Manson fired it in. Dillon steers it up into the crowd, and now the delayed penalty against St. Louis. It'll be against Brian Sutter, who at the Chicago Blue Line took a vicious swing at his brother Dwayne. It's hard to believe, but true, it's the Stanley Cup playoffs. Chicago will have the man advantage. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. Brian Sutter gets a two-minute roughing penalty. Significant because he was roughing his brother Dwayne. 6-14, the time of the penalty in a game that has seen a number of power play goals. Chicago with the man advantage now. Here's Bob Murray into the corner. Murray knocked down behind the net. Now Bothwell trying to clear it. But still loose, comes in front of big pile up. And Gretzen loses sight of the puck. And whistles are dead. Chicago with a man advantage. Trying to break this 5-5 tie. Rick Vive yapping at Terry Gregson. Five with two goals tonight. Both have come on the power play. And he's nearing a record. Bothwell tying everyone up. Then really, Federko kicks the puck in front and leads to the bad scramble. Five, one goal away from tying a Stanley Cup record for most power play goals in a series. He has four power play goals in the first four games of this series. And he's out there right now with Savard, Troy Murray, Bob Murray, and Larmer. Big face off. Mahar and Savard battle for it. Blues come up with it and Dougie Gilmore able to backhand it out of there. And the Hawks have to go back. Number six, Bob Murray in this 5-5 game. Bob Murray to Steve Larmer. Larmer firing it in. Gilmore there to poke it right back out. And Chicago will chase back again with Larmer. Being watched by Mahar. He gives it to Bob Murray, and Murray from behind his own goal. Starts to move up to Denny Savard. Savard shoots it in. In comes Five into the corner. Five and Benning battle. Now Benning knocks it on the boards. Troy Murray intercepted. Back on the point. Bob Murray to Steve Larmer. Larmer center. Caught by Troy Murray just wide. Into the corner, Savard to Steve Larmer. Back to Dennis Savard. Back on the point to Bob Murray. Now to Larmer. Over to Savard. Savard trying to move it in front. Back on the point to Steve Larmer. Shooting. Never got through. Blocked at the defense. Kirkus clears to Gilmore. Gilmore breaks up. Troy Murray upended him. But Gilmore got it into the hot zone. 30 seconds left in Brian Sutter's penalty. Chicago from behind their own goal. Larmer leading the rush to his own line. Comes to center. Fires it in. It's offside at the St. Louis line. Now we talked about five, a goal away from tying the Stanley Cup record for most.
most power play goals in a series, which is five, held by Andy Bathgate when he was with Detroit, Dennis Potvin with the Islanders, and Ken Houston, who you would not expect to see on that list from his days with the Flames. Faceoff is going to be in the center ice area. 17 seconds left of the Blues penalty. 12.03 left in regulation time. Only had a 7-7 game between these teams late in the regular season. Yeah, I thought about that a few minutes ago, too. Here's Keith Brown in his own zone, upended by Mahar. Across to Gary Nyland. Nyland into center ice, beating Lutzik. Steve Lutzik breaks in. Takes behind the net, centered it. Nyland there to intercept the pass up and freeze it just as the penalty to Brian Sutter expires. So the Blues have killed it off. Penalties have played such a huge part in this hockey game. These two power plays have been rather effective. Moments ago, the puck centered out in front. McKegney doing a good job covering Presley. That allows Millen a little time to handle the puck. And the Blackhawks want to send out the Savard line with Federko on the ice. So we talked about early in the evening, the Blues unable to really match up Mahar against Savard. The Blackhawks with the home ice have the last line change. So they get Savard out against Federko. Savard to Larmer to Brown. Shooting that hit by, but now McKegney starts back. McKegney for the Blues, shooting it in. Here comes Doug Evans on left wing. Mahar moves in, but Evans had been knocked to the ice by Brown and right on top of the puck. Blues doing what they've tried to do all night is quickly get the Mahar line out. Evans having words with Vive. Vive is not exactly the most loved player in the NHL. He does a lot of yapping and uses his stick rather handily. And Doug Evans dressed tonight with Terry, Terry Turnbull getting the night out, really taking exception. Doug Evans with 12 points in 41 games during the regular season. Down to 11 and a half minutes to go in regulation play. 5-5. At one point in this game, Rick Vive and the Blackhawks had a 3-1 lead. That was early in the second period after Vive's power play goal. But Brett Hall, just past the 11-minute mark of the second period, scored a very big goal that brought the Blues to life, cutting the Chicago lead to 3-2. To off in the Hawk zone. Mahar against Lutzik. Mahar got the draw and then goes to the bench. And then he and Dwayne Sutter bump right in front of the bench. The benches are right beside each other. And on line changes, you get a few skirmishes. Here's Benning back of his own goal. Benning out for Federko to center ice. In on right wing to Raglan, who got upended by Vince Select. Back is Nyland behind his own goal. Nyland dropping it to Dwayne Sutter. Into center ice, Lutzik shoots it in. Millen back of the net for Jimmy Bothwell. Bothwell for the Blues, starting out of there. Almost lost it, still controls it. Comes to center and scoops it in, and Pang knocked it away to Manson. Manson for Chicago. Back to his own line, now to center. Manson shooting it in. Red Hull tries to hold up Troy Murray, so Paul Cavallini can get it, but Murray tied him up. Now Paul Cavallini. Now Federko got it to Hull, held in by Manson. Shot blocked by Hull, and now Federko breaks up. Federko with Brett Hull. He's checked. Now Gino Cavallini carrying in. Gino Cavallini shoots one off of McGill and wide of the net. Now Hull centered, but nobody there. And the Hawks' Troy Murray starts back. Troy Murray shooting it in. Gilmore back of the net. Taken out. And the Blues, Gordy Roberts starts out. The Gilmore loses to Presley, gets it back again. And then Gilmore just cleared it to center ice. Troy Murray fires it in. Blues go back with Gilmore. Gilmore for the Blues, flips it high to center. Red Hull racing in after it, but it's whistled down on an offside. And we're down to 9.44 left in regulation time, 5-5. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. Play underway. Savard shooting it in for Chicago. Jimmy Bothwell back to get it. Penalty coming up to the Hawks. A delayed penalty as Mahar moves in, but Sutter was.
Rogers in ahead of the play and offside. And now a penalty against the Blackhawks, I believe, Rick Vine. Boy, he took a vicious hack at Brian Benning, who will be bruised and battered after this game. And Vibe, who really attacked Benning viciously and picked up a pair of Viners in the early stages of the game, will go off again. Watch this. You talk about a two-hander. He just whacks him right across the fanny and picks up a two-minute penalty. And if you're Blackhawk coach Bob Murdoch, you say, come on. Why are you doing that? We're trying to win a hockey game. And the Blues will have the man advantage. And again, to reiterate, the Blues power play has been quite effective tonight. They've done very, very well. By the way, game five with Jacques Martin and the Blues at home against the Blackhawks Tuesday night. It'll be on Channel 11, also on WIBB Radio, 1260 AM. Buck cleared in by Chicago. Benning back together. Brian Benning in his own zone. McKinney now tied up on the play. And by the Chicago player, Savard falls on top of the puck and forces a faceoff in the blue zone. This broadcast authorized under rights granted by the St. Louis Blues Hockey Club Incorporated solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, or other use of the description and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the St. Louis Blues Hockey Club Incorporated is prohibited. This broadcast is a production of Bud Sports, presented through the facilities of KMOX Radio and Channel 11. These teams playing their fourth game in five nights. They may be getting a mite weary. Meanwhile, the Blues on a power play. Benning has it at center ice. Benning beating one now to Tony McKechnie. In for Pedrico. Puck into the corner with Manson back to get it for Chicago. Manson cleared it out of there. And Millen out of the goal feeds it up for Gilmore. Gilmore for the Blues in this 5-5 game. Feeds McKechnie into the hot zone for Brent Hull. Hull into the corner. Gets help from McKechnie on the board. And McKechnie knocked down on the play by Manson. McKechnie trying to feed it through to Federko in the corner. Federko eludes a check. Back to Gilmore at the point. Gilmore to Federko. Into the corner to McKechnie. Tony McKechnie trying to get it free. Centered. Tipped away by the Hawks. And here's Savard to Larmer. Larmer into the blue zone. Shoots one. Millen a save, hooks it for Pavisco, couldn't get it for a second, and now knocked it off to Gilmore. Gilmore into the hot zone. He's checked, Rambo shoots, blasted it just wide. What a rocket by Hull, but just wide of the target. McKechnie to Gilmore. Now to Roberts, to Gilmore. Side of the net to McKechnie, and he shoots wide. Here's Gordy Roberts. Takes the shot. Blues on a power play. 25 seconds left in the hot penalty. To Gilmore to Pedrico. Back to Gilmore to Roberts. Side of the net to Hull. Hull trying to center to McKechnie. Shoots. Hang the same rebound. Hull centered it for Larmer. Cleared it away. Blues call there for the Blues. And here's Millen. Away out of the net near the blue line to shoot it down the ice. Now five back out of the penalty box. The Hawks have killed it off. 718 left in regulation time. Here's Gordy Roberts through center ice. Scooping it in. Herb Raglan racing in. Hang clears that away to Santa Pass. He's checked and now Manson fired it out for Chicago. They rule Cavallini could have played it so there's no icing. Paul Cavallini back to get it behind his own goal. Firing it up the middle. Knocked away by Herkus who's had three goals for the Blues tonight. Herkus checked by Brown. Now Sutter back of the net to Herka Sanders and just cleared away by Manson at the last second. Back is Troy Murray. He shoots it in. Sutter the rebound. Miller came out and stopped Wayne Sutter from close in. Into the corner of Pyla. Two Hawks and two Blues. Troy Murray. Checked by Roberts and Gordy Roberts will get a penalty. And now the Blues will be shorthanded. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. Moments ago, Dwayne Sutter cutting in around Roberts. A good save by Millen. Sutter all alone. The play continues. Roberts in the corner. And Roberts pulls down Troy Murray and picks up the two-minute holding penalty at 14-34. 5-5, 6-28.
26 to go in regulation play. And again, the special teams have really been this hockey game. Hawks have had three power play goals of their five, and they're on the power play right now. From the faceoff, Penning trying to shoot it out of there does as he got it by Bob Murray. And Chicago has to retreat. Steve Larmer back of his own goal. Chicago on a power play. Larmer to Troy Murray down left wing at center ice. Shooting it in. Millen back of the net. In comes Savard. Now it's cleared by Troy Murray on the boards. Mahar gets it to Brian Sutter. And Sutter fires it down the ice. Move change on the fly. 125 left in the penalty. Bob Murray trying to move up. Here's Murray giving it to Savard. Savard into the St. Louis on the red to Savard. Savard spins into the corner. Savard centers to Bob Murray. Couldn't handle it at the point. Held it in, however. Moves in, shoots. No one just got a stick on that. Here's Weimer at the point to Savard. And a Savard check. Gilmore gets a three. And Gilmore and Herkus break up with Bennett. Pass to Herkus. Herkus to Gilmore. Shoots. That's just wide of the turn. Troy Murray shooting. Weak shot hit Paul Cavalini. Hawks still with the man advantage. Brown at the point. Over to Larmer. Back to Keith Brown. Into Troy Murray. Now to Brown again. To Larmer. Into Savard on left wing. Savard to Larmer. Weak shot. Gilmore. Flips it for Herkus. Breaking down right wing. Tony Herkus. Shoots. Scores! Herkus gets his fourth of the night. Short-handed goal. And the Blues lead 6-5. What a night for the rookie Herkus. And what a night for the Blues. And I'm telling you, Dan Kelly, those four players out there killing the penalty, I mean, they were dead tired. Coming up the ice, Gilmore gets to the blue line, points for Herkus to drop it back to Cavallini. That's how tired Gilmore was. And Herkus says, thanks, I'll do it myself. Oh, unbelievable. Herkus cutting in. He doesn't have much to shoot at. He goes on the stick side and just catches the lower corner. Oh, my, a four-goal game for Tony Herkus, who really probably would not have seen all that much action. He's had quite a night. Young man out of the North Dakota, the college ranks, and with 4.45 to go, the Blues have the 6-5 lead. And they finally have found a way to score some goals against Darren Pang, and here the Blues are still shorthanded. Well, Tony Herkus in the earlier I should part say of the playoffs. Chicago still shorthanded. Had no goals in three games. Yeah. Now he gets four in game four. It'll look like a wonderful series all in all. No one will remember that he got them all in one game. He may get more before this series is over. Rick Vine gets a 10-minute misconduct penalty after the goal, so that won't help Chicago's comeback chances. They're still in a power play. Eight seconds left in the Blues penalty to Roberts. Shot in by Brown. Millen out of the net. Clearing one. Brian Sutter couldn't get to the puck. Presley back to the point to Nyland. They say Millen and Sutter and Roberts just out of the penalty box break up. Sutter trying to beat it in front to Mahar. Couldn't end. Now right back comes Noonan for Chicago. Ryan Noonan's shot. Blocked at the defense. Into the corner for Paul Cavallini. Cavallini beating it out on the boards. Presley held it in. Now Paul Cavallini into center ice to Sutter. Shot it to the hot line. That's broken up. And now Mahar clears it in. Less than four minutes left. In regulation time, Blues lead 6-5. Here's Lutzik for Chicago. Moving in on the left side, center, put it right through the crease. Now the Hawks, Bob Murray held it in. Trying to center, loose in front of Hope check by Roberts to clear it. Shot from the point, blocked by Paul Cavallini. And McDegney back for the Blues. Into Doug Evans. Evans to Paderko right in. Backhander just wide by Paderko. And then Bob Murray breaks up. Murray clearing it to Dave Manson. Long shot hit Bothwell. And here's Paderko back to center ice. Flipping it into the Chicago zone. 3.13 left in regulation time. Chicago coming out of their own 
zone, clear it to the St. Louis line. Bending back to get it, flipped it off the board. Sutter into the corner. Hawks Troy Murray back to Brown at the point. That shot hit Mahar. And Sutter for the Blues. Clears it down into the Hawks zone. And Gary Nyland with 2.50 left in regulation time. Back to get it. The Blues leading 6-5. Here's Nyland. Shot it in. Cavallini breaks it up. And here's Gino Cavallini with a rocket just wide from well up. Troy Murray back to get it. Leaves it in the corner. Here's Gino Cavallini poking it into the other corner. Larmer back after it. Blues with a 6-5 lead. 2.25 left in the third period. Fox clear up the center. And Gordy Roberts has Troy Murray all tied up. Now it's Larmer shooting it in. Paul Cavallini has it for the Blues. He feeds it into center ice, picked up by Gilmore. Gilmore's long shot. Hang handles that. Now to Brown. That center ice to Presley. Presley shoots it in. Dillon behind the net, leaving it for Brian Benning. And Benning lost it to Presley. Shot right on. Dillon a big save. And then the Blues clear to center. Manson knocked down on the play. And the play is called because of a hand pass from one hot player to another. 1.49 left in regulation time. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. Blues have the lead, 6-5, 1.49 to go. The Herkus goal from Gilmore to break the tie. A shorthanded goal at 15-15 here in the third period. 1.48 left. Chicago from the faceoff. Shoot it in. Hanson knocked it behind the net. Benning back to pick it up. Trying to feed it out to Mahar at center. Knocked away by Bob Murray, but now Raglan shoots it back in. Here's Murray. Over to Manson. Back to Murray. Murray at center ice on left wing to Presley. Good poke check by Bothwell to break it up. Back comes Gino Cavallini. Flips it into the hot zone. 120 left in. Regulation time. Bob Murray for the Hawks. Trying to clear it. Gilmore held it in. Now Bob Murray tries again for the Hawks. Comes to center to Presley. He flips it in. Doug Evans back for the Blues. Evans right in front of his own net. Nice pass to Gino Cavallini. He comes to center. We're in the final minute of regulation. The Blues leading 6-5. to five. Hawks back in their own zone. Here comes Nyland for Chicago. Nyland firing it in. Bahar back to clear it to Gino Cavallini. Couldn't get it up. Bahar holding it in. There goes the goaltender to the bench. Side of the net. Shot just wide by Larmer. Now Roberts back to the net. Trying to freeze it there. And it is held with 34 seconds left. Chicago with six attackers on the ice. Two of the last three shifts prior to this one, Bob Murdoch went with a fourth line, fresh players. Very interesting strategy. And Dan Kelly, I go back to the point about Bob Murdoch. He gets down to less than, well, four minutes to go, about three and a half minutes. He doesn't bury Savard and his older, more mature players, the fellas you would expect them to go to. He went to Vince Allette and Santa Pass, and he even had Brian Noonan out there for a shift. He went to Ludzik. He went to players that had some legs. As it turned out, it didn't pay off, but if nothing else, with 34 seconds to go, he's got his big guns very, very fresh and looking for a goal to send it into overtime. Blues send out their checkers. Mahar, Sutter, Raglan, Bobwell, and Brian Benning. And Benning has seemed to be on the ice all night tonight. Hawks sending out Savard, Dwayne Sutter, Santa Pass, Brown, Troy Murray, and Larmer. Six attackers. Rick Vive, interestingly enough, in the penalty box serving the misconduct, or he'd be out there. Here's Savard winning a face off to Brown. Shot, Miller to save! And then he throws that one. That shot by Brown was right on target. And you're back to the face off. How essential the face offs are. Savard winning that one from Mahar. And they line up in a hurry with 31 seconds to go in regulation play. The Blues leading 6 5. Big face off. Savard and Mahar. Troy Murray jumped the gun and skated into the circle. That delays the drop. Now Savard again, back to Brown at the point. Other point to Larmer. Raglan came out and blocked the shot and cleared it down the ice. Did he clear it too hard? No. 
Doesn't go all the way, no ice. Brown back after it to Larmer. 17 seconds left. Now to Troy Murray. Broken up again by Ragland. Here's Larmer trying to shoot it in. Does. 10 seconds left. Benning for the Blues trying to clear it. Knocked down behind it at the Santa Pass Center. Sutter cleared it away. Ragland carries out. This game is over. And the Blues win at Chicago Stadium. 6 5. The Blues lead the series. Three games to one. And the Blues can wrap up the series on home ice Tuesday night in game five. Oh, what a terrific win and an incredible way to win it. On Tony Herkus' shorthanded goal, his fourth of the game with only four minutes and 45 seconds to go. And it had been Herkus earlier in the period that picked up his hat trick goal that tied the game. Millen, very strong in goal, stronger as the game went on. Herkus, a four-goal game in Chicago, and Dan Kelly, a three-game-to-one lead in the series. Moving to the arena Tuesday night, things look very, very bright. What a night for Tony Herkus. Four goals, including the game winner, which was shorthanded and gives the Blues a 6-5 victory. And the Blues lead the series three games to one. What a night in the Windy City for the Blues. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. The St. Louis Blues, who have never in four previous playoff meetings defeated the Chicago Blackhawks in a series, win this game 6-5, lead the series three games to one, and have a chance to wrap up the series in game five Tuesday night at the arena in St. Louis. Just an old-fashioned Blues-Blackhawk battle, Ken. Well, it's always fun to get in the playoffs. The great rivalry, a tremendous building. And, you know, when the Blues got down 3-1, Dan, in the second period, you thought they were in big, big trouble. That Fred Hall goal was very, very big that made it 3-2. And Tony Herkus, who had not scored a goal in the previous three games, gets four. I'm going to ask him what he had for breakfast today. And the next time I play golf against you, I'm going to eat the same thing. <laughs> Opportunity, you know, is the big story for Herkus. He got on the power play. Gilmore moved back to the point because Gaston Jringa hurt his elbow in the first period. Sometimes some adversity turns into a great opportunity and success in this case. A big night for Tony Herkus. He not only tied the game, but he got the game winner as well. 5.54 in the third period. Vive had given the Blackhawks the lead. Then this deflection on Paul Cavallini's shot by Herkus. That tied it at five. Then with 6.40 to go in the game, Millen a great save on a Dwayne Sutter breakaway. Gordy Roberts gets a penalty seconds later, and the Blues come up with the winner while they're shorthanded. Boy, you would never expect it. Perkins, he's got a winger with him. Gilmore, he's got Cavallini trailing. Gilmore points right there, says drop it to Cavallini. I'm not going to go to the net. I'm dead tired. So Herkus shoots, stick side, and he beats goaltender Pang. That's the winner with less than five minutes to go and the fourth goal of the game for Tony Herkus. And Greg Millen gave up five, but he had a couple of times where he had to stop breaks or breakaways, especially Dwayne Sutter late. And he is a happy Blues player as he's congratulated a very tired Brian Benning. Enough energy to become the first player to get to the goaltender tonight. Six to five, the Blues win it. They lead the series three games to one. I'm so excited, I almost forgot about the three stars. The Budweiser three stars tonight. Brett Hall had ten shots in the first two periods. He had the wonderful second goal that really kept Chicago from running away. Steve Larmer had a goal, had a couple assists for Chicago. Played very steady, also our number two star. Who else for the number one star but Tony Herkus with a four-goal performance here tonight. Those are the are three stars. A reminder that there are good seats available, or at least there were earlier today, for Game 5 at the arena on Tuesday night. The game will be televised on Channel 11 beginning at 7.30, and our radio coverage will be on 12 a.m. dial WIBV, the pregame show on radio at 7.20. The Blues win a thriller, 6-5 at Chicago Stadium. They lead the series 3-1. They can wrap it up on home ice Tuesday night with another victory. From Chicago Stadium, with Ken Wilson, Dan Kelly, so long.